Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to Feedback Friday, Art Edition. I'm your host, Jacob Johnson. Welcome, everybody. Hello. How's everyone doing? Today is the feedback of the art. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be doing art today. Um, going to be doing, hopefully, two and a half small items. It might just be one. We'll see how fast it goes. But uh, they're, they're pretty, like reliable to create items, but also have a wonderful opportunity to have a lot of fun with the art. So it could end up going a little longer um, in terms of kind of like how much rendering I put in because I really do just kind of enjoy rendering on stream with you. Uh, so I can often just kind of get a little caught up in the extra details and uh, what might normally take a few minutes, sorry, not a few minutes, a few hours, um, might end up taking the day. Uh, but as long as you enjoy it and I create the cool artwork that we need for the game, then all is well. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to work on today is a new scroll case and a new treasure chest for that scroll case. Um, and I'll kind of show you what the idea is very soon. Um, hello! Yeah, so just making sure everything's all set up properly. Audio seems fine. All right, cool. Um, feels like there's a big delay with the chat. My goodness. All right, well, um, hopefully there is not too crazy a delay with the chat. Um, I'm seeing all of the people saying hello now, uh, so that's a bit, a bit of a delay. Um, who knows what's up with that? Not I. Okay, so what we're working on is the Valor Rift Gauntlet maps. Um, so we we we've kind of held off on creating the uh, the treasure maps for the Gauntlet because of the nature of the gameplay. It's much less of one of those areas where you can kind of you know, specifically target characters and, you know, like arm this cheese to kind of like go after these mice or like travel to this little location within. Um, so that's kind of like a challenge that we were looking at and we kind of had all these kinds of ideas, some of them really complex and, and potentially messy and we kind of like tested them out and kind of like what it took to kind of do that well enough was like going to really hamper kind of like other things so it didn't seem like the way to go um and so i think kind of like uh what we are kind of like looking at with it more so is uh kind of like how a lot of uh some area maps are a little more kind of like you pick them up to kind of like just get a little extra loot um, and they're not like crazy complex to like, you know, track down every last mouse to try and complete like a rainbow map or something like that, where you have to like go to the ends of the world to try and get it. Instead, it's more, you know, kind of like, well, if you have the the uh, kind of um, uh, ancient relics to kind of like spend, it's an extra avenue of getting loot while you're doing your regular runs. So I think that's probably pretty awesome. And I I, I don't know the full details. There's there's probably like a good selection of mice that might have that extra kind of like, oh, you might you might have to have a little bit of strategy to try and complete it. But overall, I think it's probably going to be like a nice kind of good map to do. Um, but like kind of one of those where it's like you don't need to like necessarily build a full party to kind of like complete it in a decent amount of time, I guess. I don't know. Wow, my cat just turned off the monitor. <laughs> She's just like always lays on my desk, especially when it's super sunny. And boy, howdy, it's very sunny right now. Um, and uh, I like scooched my Cintiq uh, equivalent, my my Huon over, um, and that woke her up and startled her. And she just kind of like bopped her head into the power button there. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I think it's going to be more of like a chill map, which is actually really nice. It the The rift uh, the, the Valor Rift is, like, a pretty good kind of, like, um, like, park and run 
kind of place, um, which I think is kind of like one of the really nice things about it. It's kind of like you can kind of like uh, preload your run and like then just kind of like go in and then you use your your like widget on your phone to kind of like progress through it and you don't need to like min max it um, and kind of like constantly change things around so like having a map that kind of like plays in that space is pretty good I think it, it works well um, yeah yeah and that's another thing about um, maps that are a little more kind of like casual easy um, is you know uh, they're not going to have like crazy rewards for them either like you know rainbow maps and stuff are like an arduous thing uh, so those those make sense that it's like much more rewarding than kind of like oh you get a couple extra you know like location rewards so it's kind of like by choice you can just kind of like pad it out if that's where you want to spend your relics um, and that's kind of a cool thing uh, that I think they provide I, I certainly enjoy having that plus it's it's actually what's interesting is depending on what's within it um, because we tend to bring the treasure hunting out after an area has been out for a decent amount of time, it creates a nice little avenue of when people come through later and we have cooler content in the game that exists and we want them to come and enjoy the cool content with you, the rest of you, um, if they are kind of like able to um, pull out some maps, it's actually a, a handy little compression tool in some cases. Uh, so it allows the player to kind of like get a couple extra resources to get through the area a little bit faster. Um, and it's also a little, it adds a little bit of excitement and spice. Um, so I think just overall it's a really great thing to have. Um, so it's been like longer than uh, we usually take to kind of bring in uh, treasure maps. So that's what we're working on today. Um, and so now I'm going to plop on over. We're going to try Clip Studio again. Um, I've been trying to do that with the streams just because I think it's more fun um, because in the end I get to produce that little kind of like video where you get to kind of like watch the whole thing over uh, like a minute and a half or whatnot. Um, and I'm trying to learn it and I always seem to enjoy challenging myself uh, to the extremes on Feedback Fridays. So it's the perfect time to uh, to go back into Clip Studio. I've been doing a little more Photoshop recently just because I had been having a couple of bad art days uh, in the past because I was just struggling with Clip Studio. Um, and then there's kind of like some more UI and, and interface stuff that I've been doing and it's not as good for that. Uh, I definitely find Photoshop is more comfortable for creating that kind of stuff. So let me see if I have a template for Treasure scroll case, I do. There we go. Um, oh boy, this looks like a nice old file. Um, and then a nice old file opened in Clip Studio. So let's see. I'm going to see what the actual... Because uh, I don't think I've actually made um, a scroll case in quite a while these days. Uh, let's see. Should we start with the scroll case or should we do the treasure chest first? I kind of like know what the scroll case will be, right? Like it, it, it already expresses itself. I mean, it's the tower, right? Why not make that look that way? Um, so I feel like that one's kind of like going to be easy and fast. And then having that to jump from will allow me to kind of like have some language to apply to the treasure chest. So I feel like Starting with the scroll case is probably the best idea. Um, sorry, what I'm trying to figure out is not my story. Um, changing the image resolution. Oh my goodness. <gasps> yeah, this is an old file. This is 333 pixels because why did I choose that number? I don't know. I could not tell you. Um, so that's not at all the size that we tend to draw small items in. Um, there's a good chance that like any scroll cases I had done more recently were working off of an older scroll case that I just opened and kind of like drew over top of. Um, let's see. 
3,000, I don't think I use 3,000 for files, like items. That's probably a bit too big. Let me see what my actual dimensions are. Uh, 1,000. Okay, 1,000 is not crazy. It's not a ton, but I'm also not expecting to print these up as posters. You know, the more resolution I give myself, the more I, Jacob, will want to just render in the detail. So limiting myself to a thousand pixels is not crazy. This is the minimum I do now, though, because um, I mean, it's very pixely right now, just because it it like. Uh, has been blown up, so it's taken what little information there was and added more, hence why it's like so pixely. But um, even if I were to draw just kind of like something like this, if I really zoom in, you can actually see there's not actually like, it's not crazy huge. You can see the pixels pretty easily. But, you know, we're going to be seeing this in game more like that size or even that size, right? So, you know, we're not going to worry about the dimensions being too, you know, like crispy because it's actually a waste and can sometimes be a detriment of how an image looks if you put too much detail. You know, um, one of the things that's important with how I set up my workspace is I have kind of like my drawing tablet uh, or my drawing monitor, and then I have kind of like my preview on my main monitor. Um, and I always have one of those views at size. So I can look over and see how does this read to someone in the game looking at it and make a, a value judgment on kind of like, should I add this extra detail? I basically will, but then the question is, is this actually making it harder to read. So if you like put in too much detail, it can actually get kind of noisy if you're not kind of planning your composition values and all that properly, um, you can make it actually harder to see. Uh, so small things work better when you have clean shapes and they read uh, much easier when it's like, you know, more graphical in a way. Um, but I, I don't tend to like doing graphical stuff, so I try to render with full detail in a way where it still is clean. Um, and I'm not perfect at it, but it's valuable to do. Um, okay, so I'm actually just going to save this since I blew it up to the size it should be at a minimum. Um, and I'm going to turn on my time lapse because that is actually why I'm in this program mainly. And I'm going to save it because I just want to have like every file I work on in Clip Studio just start to record the time lapse automatically and, and like not forget to do that. All right, so first thing we're going to do is work up our sketch. So we have a basic sketch. And what's cool about some items, and I really enjoy these items, um, because of the constrictions they provide. So there's there's a few of them. Uh, scroll cases, treasure maps, eggs, cheese, traps, bases. Um, basically, uh, there is kind of sets of items where they always share the same kind of angle and kind of position. Um, and what that does is it challenges the artist to kind of like work within that confined space. So honestly, some of the funnest stuff to render is like eggs and treasure chests because uh, you already know what it needs to do. And then you need to come up with clever ways to make them special. Um, whereas like mice, it's kind of like, well, you can kind of like really actually, if you want, go from all kinds of different angles and, you know, fill the space in different ways. So there's just so much more decisions to make. Um, but because of this format, it's restrictive in a way that you actually have to get more creative in a way to kind of like make that special. So I actually really quite enjoy these items. Eggs, I don't know why, but eggs are like some of the most enjoyable drawing I get to do year round. Uh, I think it's just because 
most of the onus is on the rendering of it as opposed to kind of like uh, sketching out a good kind of like um, gesture and kind of, you know, make sure the anatomy looks okay and stuff like that. Like, I feel like maybe those parts uh, are not my strongest skill set, like doing good posing and character design. I, I'm good at it. I, I, you know, it's my career. Um, but I, I think that I just probably my most favorite part of art is the rendering. And so doing items like this is mostly about rendering, I think. And so that's what is neat to me. Um, so I'm actually going to travel to the, uh, the Valor Rift in the game. Because um, that way I'll get to kind of like see that HUD that everyone does. Um, and I feel like that's probably the best kind of like palette to work from. You know, you always have that HUD in your face. Um, oh, I just ran out of birthday cheese. Oof. All right. Um, so you have that, that HUD is always kind of like the thing in your face. Um, so that's probably the best thing to kind of like base it off of. Um, and then the mice are kind of like within that. They have their own kind of like design rules. But like, I feel like the scroll case and scroll chest or treasure chest are tied to the tower more so than the mice directly, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to try and base it off of like how the tower looks. Um, although I think there's a lot of crossover. Um, obviously, like the mice themselves are drawn inside the environment uh, because the rift we have the background so they have that like really cool colorful cobble stone and uh, you know like I think I'll be able to bring some of that element into it I think because it's a rift map we're gonna be able to kind of like bring more of that um, that rift mist into the the pieces um, uh, and it's it's fun because it's like the nebula kind of like brushwork that we use for it as opposed to kind of like the thick kind of like gummy clouds from like Nonian Rift. Um, this one's this more kind of like uh, electrified air, um, if you will. So I think that'll be neat to kind of like put as the backdrop. Um, so let's see. There is definitely a lot of kind of like stonework. Um, obviously, I think kind of like making this feel like a piece of the tower a representation of the tower is important. Um, and if you were to kind of like look at how it looks on the map, uh, that kind of like is how I imagine it, where there's kind of like a lot of kind of like bulky stones all kind of like clumped together, right? But like some are kind of just like floating off and just kind of hovering around it. So it's got this really kind of like magic, um, almost static electrified feel to it. Um, and then also to kind of like show this twisting spiral staircase, the turreting and, and kind of like the tower quality, having kind of like these, you know, uh, I guess arrow slits kind of running the course of it is kind of like, you know, something that helps express what this structure is, right? So I think I'll make sure to have something like that kind of running across it. Um, again, super small size. So I want to make sure that those elements can stand out clearly to us. Uh, so do we ha do we want to maybe put less of these windows and make them a little bigger, more obvious, as well as the stonework? You know, if, if it's too small, if these are like tiny little bricks, you might not actually be able to see what those are at size. Um, so making sure they read so you know what it is, is important. Um, so yeah, we're going to get the overall shape of the structure, which I mean, it already has thanks to the scroll case design. Um, but then we can bring in other qualities of the tower itself. So. Um, you know, like we'll have like these windows with kind of like the light pouring out of them, I think. Um, in the original gauntlet, um, it has kind of like these kind of flags at the top, which I think is kind of neat. Um, so we could maybe do something to reference that. But 
since this is like more like the upside down in a in a way. Um, it is like an infinite tower. So do we show that somehow? Does this kind of like scroll case feel like it goes off forever? That'd be kind of interesting. I don't know how to state that. I don't know if that works. Um, like we can't crop it. That's one of the rules that I have for items um, where basically we don't want things to go off of the edge. Um, and that's kind of like another one of those interesting restrictions behind the design. Um, so I'm not going to have the, the scroll case just be infinite in length. Although, you know, like it's okay to break the rules every once in a while. So like that could actually be kind of neat. Um, but uh, that would express that kind of like infinite tower thing maybe. Or since it's kind of like the like the inverted version of the the king's gauntlet like we could have these kind of like dark banners on the bottom of it you know like something eerie and creepy so it's like oh i i still see this as the uh the king's gauntlet tower but like obviously it's the the rift version of that so like having those flags there does kind of like indicate that um there's also the whole kind of like eclipse thing going on. So, you know, we could have maybe that's present directly behind it. There's kind of like this, you know, weird kind of uh, eclipse happening directly behind. Um, and that could be cool. Like this could be silhouetted against light in the same way. Um, we'll have kind of like the uh, the light doing the chromatic um, aberration thing that we do for this rift where there's kind of like the channels that shift so they have kind of like the blue and the red uh, and where they overlap it's white but like on the very edges you have the color bleeding um, and that just has kind of like a neat feeling to it kind of makes it feel really otherworldly like you're underwater in a way but like because the air is this kind of like nebula, uh, electric static looking thing, then it's more just this weird magical ether that you're kind of within. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking something with these elements is neat. Um, maybe another way to show this kind of like being more of this like infinite towers instead of having these kind of clean caps on the end, right? Um, what if instead these look like they were kind of like uh, forming and kind of, you know, dissolving. Um, so like they're not kind of like uh, a perfect end cap. And instead it looks like they're just kind of like coalescing as you're maybe passing through the tower. So like imagining you're kind of like going through the tower and it's constantly kind of like building itself around you or something cool like that. Um, just a, you know, random thoughts to kind of like play with this space. So what what is kind of neat to do is try to get like a good mixture of large and small shapes to kind of add that, that visual interest. Um, they're all the same shape that is useful in a way to create like a rhythm and kind of like strength and, and uniform kind of like quality. But if there's like, if you want some chaos to it, um, you can, you know, just like go crazy and like just have it randomly scattered. But at the same time, when you want like good looking randomness, you actually need to like design that um, and kind of create, uh, you know, like uh, choose to have, you know, a nice combination of big and small and the way they're spaced is actually purposeful. Because if you actually just like really actually randomly put stuff down, it can actually look not nearly as nice as planning it, even though you're planning it to look random. Um, so just going to try and kind of like make it feel like it's coalescing together. So having more and more of these kind of um, cobblestones kind of like 
collecting at the ends might help with that feeling of it, it constructing itself as it goes. Um, another nice thing about the kind of design aesthetics of the area is there's a lot of kind of like nice metal work in the characters and such. And so that might be neat to kind of like put as like banding around parts of the scroll case. So like there's kind of like the potential for there to be you know, um, like a metal band here, and we could add some kind of like cool metal work. Um, and then like the actual center of the case here where it kind of like, you know, uh, twists together, however that works, um, that could also be a, a nice place to kind of like add that accent, you know, cause like if the whole thing's made out of just that one material, and you know we mix we mix it up with the like the lights kind of like you know spiraling down and it's not bad but I think that like a nice accent of the metal on top of the stone will be really nice um, so something along those lines right now I'm like loosely just kind of like scribbling it in um, and I don't think that the dimensions are how I want them. We'll figure it out. I want to try and work relatively fast because, as I said, um, I'm going to try and get through two items today. Can't guarantee it because you know me and my rendering. I like to just kind of be busy with it. But uh, the goal is to get both the the treasure map and the treasure scroll scroll case. Uh, rendered today. Um, and I actually do need to uh, keep it a short day because um, I have some packages I have to drop off at a drop-off point before 5.30. So that is a thing that I'll need to pop out and do before I kind of return and make sure everything is all set for the week. But uh, let's see. Um, so this is looking okay. <laughs> oh yeah, like a, a Valorif journal theme could be neat. Maybe that's something I could bring up. Um, like that could be a cool reward for like a rare thing inside the chest or something to add a little bit of extra like, oh, it's not just area stuff, you know. Maybe maybe like something a little unique like that could be a worthy addition. I'll have to kind of propose that to the team, see what they think. Because again, that's kind of, you know, extra resources to to put aside for something like that. And um, I don't think it's a bad idea, though. I, I like that concept. Um, I, I thought we maybe had a journal theme for the Valor Rift, but I guess we did not. But like... The way that the, the HUD works, like the look of it, like that'd be really easy to like turn that into a journal theme or, or something similar. Uh, so it'd be pretty pretty easy to create something that could work well, I think. Um, yeah, that's a neat idea of having the stairs themselves wrapping around the outside of it. I actually kind of like that just because this like climbing the stairs is such a, a element of the gameplay experience. That like showing that um, isn't like a bad idea, even though like when you imagine the tower, it's like well the stairs are like inside the tower, right? So why are they drawn on the outside for this? Is there's kind of like a big part of the gameplay there, so why not? The the whole world is like weird and uh, different in the rift, so you know showing this as if you're looking from the inside of the tower, but it's on the outside of this object. That's kind of neat. Like the, the way the cobbles here could be is like, they're more like the floor cobbles from the mouse like drawings. And here I am talking about like, oh, I should base it off of like the HUD illustration and the map because that's the tower itself. But now I'm like talking about like, no, let's make it look like the mouse version. I don't know. This is why we do this live, so I can just kind of ramble and get 
you know, random suggestions and not actually understand what people are suggesting and then just kind of do my own thing that is out of nowhere and wastes a lot of time. And that's why you come here to watch this. Cause it's um, what you all crave, apparently. Right? This is what we want. I should know. I've been doing this for years, right? Uh, but yeah, so I, I like the idea of showing the stairs, actually. I think that could be a neat part of it. Because I think the, the windows are definitely a good way to kind of like express this towerness of it. But now I'm kind of wondering what it would look like with the, the stairs wrapping around it. Even if they're just like floating around the outside, like that's kind of cool. Hmm. I mean, it's so much more difficult. I, I don't know why. I've, I've always had to draw spirals in the game, right? Like candy canes and drills and all kinds of spinning things that I end up drawing. Um, so you would think I'd get pretty decent at drawing spirals in 3D. I've had to draw so many. But they always kind of, like, there's always just a little bit of, like, did I do that right? Is this, is this working? It's good enough. It's fine. Um, but it's like, I can always, like, look at how I do a spiral and be like, I, that, that could be better. I didn't quite capture it correctly. Uh, so that's just kind of something that's interesting, because now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, oh, no floating stairs spiraling around this that's gonna that's gonna like be a moment where I'm like oh no hopefully this is working um, but again you know we're gonna be making this for a tiny item so let's not worry ourselves too hard about it um, in fact making sure the stairs read is gonna be a challenge right it's gonna be something we need to be able to do well. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, there's also um, a cool suggestion of having like the the mist kind of overtaking the caps of the the scroll case to kind of like have it feel like it goes off into you know infinity, which is cool. Um, so that could be a way to do it. There are actually items that are rift specific where the whole thing is filled with the rift kind of mist and the item is still kind of cropped inside to that um i still try and avoid that like where i can i have it still vignette at the edges um and so that is probably doable with this but the way that the scroll cases are laid out is like they're pretty close to the corners uh so there's not a lot of room to kind of overtake it with this like thick fog um, so I'm definitely going to have that mist within it, but I, and I'll, I'll even have it kind of like trying to kind of like overtake some of the stones because I think that'll look more three dimensional and interesting, but I don't know if I'll be able to obscure the, the caps of it very effectively without kind of like really cropping the edges, which can be kind of like, um, a no, no, but if that works the best for this image, it's fine. Um, Often, I, I think one of the reasons why I kind of like created the rule of like, well, don't have things crop off the edges is because they're inside the inventories and shops and stuff where you see these things, <clears throat> they're often on kind of like a white backdrop. And so if they don't touch the edges, you just have this item just kind of like comfortably sitting in that space. And it, it kind of like looks good with other items in that same view. Um, but when you have something that like crops really hard right at the edge and it's beside other items that don't have that, suddenly it's kind of like this weird cutoff that doesn't make much sense. Although I don't think it's, you know, confusing anyone. It's just an image that's that small, right? Um, but yeah, I, I kind of like trying to keep that consistency where I can. Um, but yeah, as a rule, it's great. But we also break rules, so uh, if we want, 
we can definitely have kind of like the mist kind of leaving the frame and kind of overtaking the caps to kind of help sell that that like it just keeps going feeling which I'm kind of thinking is more and more what might end up happening but we shall see I don't actually know how this is gonna look in the end All right. um, so I'm liking the idea of there being the kind of like the eclipse kind of effect happening behind it I mean that's just thematically what we do here. Um, the the cobblestone that helps read us the tower. The the like the windows wrapping and spiraling around obviously is another important part for selling the towerness of it. Um, maybe I'll just get rid of that one. And so we're gonna try to get the stairs. Uh, and then I think that's probably as far as we need to go because you know every single added detail just means that the other elements have to kind of compete to read well so um, in general as a good design principle less is more um, if you have less stuff that you're trying to show and express and explain um, it is going to read more effectively and be stronger overall. Therefore, less is more. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to attempt the stair thing, but we'll see if that does read or not. Um, I think that. I can use some of the atmosphere to work that in a little more effectively because I could have the tower itself kind of like fading out a bit and then have the stairs kind of like popping out thanks to a little bit of atmosphere trickery. Um, mm, that's a neat idea. Um, sorry, I've not been very good at looking at the chat, but that's... That's a cool suggestion. Um, so, could one end of the scroll case be a fragment of the eclipse, uh, and the other end being the core, sort of like the caps? That is a neat idea. Um, it is tempting. I'm kind of thinking, like, maybe I want to do something with that for the treasure chest more so, because I feel like the scroll case is like something you can get from the cartographer. Um, but the treasure chest is what you get from the cool mice and so like the eclipse and such um so like i feel like maybe it would make more sense on the treasure chest not that it is you know something we would need to be able to explain like yes the cartographer is the one that made this ridiculously crazy magic item um uh so I'm not I'm not too worried about it being like well why is the the fragment here and you know um, but yeah, I think maybe less is more for this will be what we just need to repeat because <laughs> I think there's so many cool um, ideas for the area that we could incorporate you know like there's all the kind of like different flavors of the floors too that would be cool to show somehow to kind of like create this visual of like all the uniqueness of the tower um, but that's kind of like oh my goodness it, it would be too much to try and express in, in something as small as this um, but uh, if it were doable I, you know I would want to do it um, all right I don't know the more I'm thinking about it the more I'm just like I don't even want to attempt the stairs I love the idea but now I don't want to do it I uh, I want to say that it's the practical part of my brain saying, well, that would just be a lot more effort and probably not read very well, so probably not the most important thing to try and work in. But I suspect it's it's more so just the the like the lazy part of me that's like, no, I don't want to have to like 
make all those spirals work perfectly, even though no one will be able to actually see them very effectively. Uh, so, you know what? As wonderful as the idea is, I think I'm going to just not attempt that one. Maybe we can work it into the, the treasure chest, though. That'd be kind of cool. An unexpected idea for a chest of just having these, like, stairs climbing it or something interesting. Or maybe, like, hmm. yeah, because we don't tend to show the treasure chest open. So never mind. I was like, what if when it's open you see the stairs coming out of it or something cool? But yeah, we tend to show it closed. I think there are certainly treasure chests that we draw that are open, but they're actually not like the maps. So, um, which is interesting. We have so many treasure chests in the game. Um, and there was like some art that we were kind of like putting together for something else. And we're like, oh, it could be like a treasure chest for this too. And we're like kind of thinking about it, like, oh, maybe we should like probably not just add another treasure chest that isn't related to the current treasure chest content. Uh, so we decided to go a different route for it. Um, it's kind of like ancient crystals in the game. Anywhere that it could be added, we add ancient crystals. Because um, that's just fun and easy. Yeah, treasure chests are just cool and I enjoy drawing them. They're neat and great and fun, um, but also there is a certain language that we've developed around them, so it's easy, it's easy to kind of like confuse that by overusing it for things that aren't the, the treasure hunting. That's important for us to be aware of. Gotta try and kind of keep a, a known language for the players, you know. We don't kind of like introduce a cheese that isn't a cheese, you know, it doesn't operate how you are used to it for the past 13 years. Um, I, mean, I feel like one day we might, but it's probably best to not do that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, then again, like we've done uh, things to break the rules, um, like uh, trap skins um, for uh, the the golem guardian trap. Um, like the trap skin actually affected what the trap does, and that's kind of like the base rule is like, no, that's not what trap skins are for. They're just cosmetic. But in that one case, we're like, oh, we can break the rule for that. That's more interesting and. It kind of makes sense because we really wanted one trap to represent many, many, and like, how can we have people change their setup um, that isn't going to require us to kind of like create a whole new tool to do it? And so, like in that one case, having the trap skins cause that effect. Uh, well, I mean, we've done it for other parts too. I think the um, there's like the Tribal trap, whatever that one's called, um, that does does something. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. If I was on that tangent before, but here you go. Um, okay, so the light isn't going to read very well in this sketch because um, that's going to be much more of a value portion of it, but I'm thinking that's pretty neat. Um, it's kind of hard to see what it's going to look like in the end, just because it's really flat and scribbly and messy. But I think that might actually be all that's necessary for a sketch, which, oh, that's very nice because, what was it, last Last stream, I just like ended up taking the whole day to figure out a sketch that was just frustrating me. Um, and so I have very little time to actually render. Uh, and in this case, I think that we could move on to just rendering this and resolve any kind of thing that we're not sure about through the sketch or through the rendering. 
um, because it's kind of the questions that I have beyond this is more about like how I'm going to render things. So, although the clean like the the sketch isn't very clean, um, like I think that these bands are kind of like wonky and the angles are a bit off. Um, and like, yeah, I should probably make sure that this shape feels scroll case enough. I think maybe it's not quite there yet. So I think I should play with that silhouette just a little bit further to make sure it's very clear. Because um, as much as I want to make this like totally beautiful and, you know, evoke all these feelings, what is more important, I believe, is making sure it is still a scroll case. Um, so that I'm worried isn't happening yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak some things on this first, but it's not too far away from where I think it needs to be. Um, so that's good. Um, yeah, big big old slab of spiral indeed. Hmm. The central part of the scroll could look more exploded to see the eclipse slash nebula in the background. That could be cool too. Then again, if it was like all exploded, then it's kind of like, what, do, what am I looking at? It's this cylinder of exploded cobblestone. Um, so either it would be like exploded in the center and then the, the ends of it are kind of like more kind of solidified and, and a shape, um, or it's this version where it's the ends are kind of exploded and the center is more kind of like formed. And I think in this case, it's easier to understand what it is with the center being kind of like formed and the caps being kind of more like weird. Um, but I, I do like that concept of especially where that silhouette, but like where the eclipse is, that's kind of a cool spot to have all that happening. Uh, it makes me think of the, um, uh, what is that trap name? It's the, the, like, the latest rift trap, I can't think of the name now, like the tower one, where it's kind of like erupted um, and inside the center is that black hole kind of uh, eclipse feeling thing. Um, but then, you know, the tower itself is just kind of like warped around that. Uh, so that's kind of like what I'm picturing for that suggestion. That seems really cool. But again, I think it'll read better as a scroll case with the center being solid. And as I said just a moment ago, I think it's more important right now that people who look at it understand that it's a scroll case. That's probably the most important thing, in fact. So I might I might try to really pull in that shape and just have a little bit of extra flavor to it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Yeah, the dissonance, right? Is it time split dissonance? No, that's that's the I, now I'm trying to remember. I need to know. I don't think I have that trap right now. Weapons. The celestial. That's not true. Oh, okay, so it does have dissonance in the name. Chrome Celestial Dissonance. Um, yeah, I believe that is the one. Oh, all right. And that is the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly that. Um, it is in dire need of more skins, you say. How interesting. How interesting you would suggest such a thing. Um, but I agree. Uh, Alright, so... Yeah, curious to know what kind of rewards we can get. I am as well. I actually don't know what will be specifically inside of the treasure chest. 
Um, I don't think it's going to be anything too crazy, though, because of what I mentioned earlier being kind of like the mechanics of the area. It's, it's not going to be able to be a really highly challenging map, because um, either we would kind of like put like really difficult to achieve things on it, which is hard to do for this specific area anyways. Um, and then it would almost be like a really frustrating map. Uh, or it's just kind of like, you know, what the area is, is kind of like really limited in what we can use. And we had other ideas that I think are neat, but it would have taken like a lot of kind of like extra resources to pull it off how we would have needed it to work. And so it's kind of like not worth it, um, but it's something to kind of like have um, in the back of our minds for kind of like future potential uh, ways of doing more different interesting maps. Um, yeah, so because it's going to be a little more of a just kind of local map um, and it's not going to be hugely demanding to complete, it's kind of more like the, the the thing that, you know, is really difficult about the, uh, the uh, tower, the Valor Rift, is like it's not an area where you can like control what you're hunting so easily, right? Like every other area, pretty much, you can kind of like change things to target different um, mice. And uh, aside from kind of like changing the tower itself before you enter it, um, using kind of like your materials there, uh, you can't really like uh, go to you know the the thief floor and, and just hunt there for you know. A, a long period of time <laughs> you just fly past it like crazy um, uh, so so it's it's a bit more of a randomly completed map uh, all right so I'm going to use where's the flip there it is um, I'm just gonna flip this so I can kind of like look at it see how bad my ellipses are right now. It's always useful to, to flip your image. You'll always be able to kind of like notice things that look wrong if you do that. Um, whereas if you're kind of like drawing it, as you're drawing it, you're kind of like, well, this is how this is going to look. And you put it down and cool, it looks kind of how I want it. Great, good enough. Moving on, here's where I'm drawing now. And then when you kind of like step back and look at it, it's kind of like you've already seen it all, so it's hard to kind of like really analyze it and understand what you're looking at because you've like, you've been inside the forest and you can't see the trees. Uh, or you've, you can only see the trees but not the forest. I don't know. Um, but then when you flip the whole image, suddenly you're kind of like getting this meta look at it and kind of like step back in a way and, and re-evaluate everything because it all actually looks different now. And now you can see where all your bad angles are. Um, or at least you'll, you'll be able to like feel if something is off, right? You may not actually be able to see what it is, but like if you flip something and you're like, I don't like it. It doesn't look as good flip this way. That's that's like when you need to start realizing that something isn't good, you know? Um, if you flip an image and you're like, looks fine. That's awesome. <laughs> like anytime that happens to me, which is very rare, um, then I know that I've like done a good art. <laughs> you know, if I can flip an image and I'm like happy with how it looks flipped, and it's like, oh, that's a nice surprise. Nothing is immediately standing out as bad. Um, so that's always really nice when that happens. But right now I'm kind of like, eh, the, the, like, the ellipses feel a little bit wonky. There's something not quite right. They're not lining up how I want them to. Um, and something that, like, is kind of like we know because we see these in, you know, daily lives often like pipes or whatever um, but 
the way you kind of like figure out angles for ellipses and stuff, it's like, you know, if you have kind of like, this is the direction of the tube, the cylinder, um, the widest point of the ellipse is 90 degrees perpendicular to that line. Um, and so when you have kind of like an ellipse that doesn't end like that, then your brain is like, that's at a slight angle. Um, but when you're drawing, it's kind of hard to see that you've done that. Um, so like the fact that these should be like 90 degrees to that center line, but like it doesn't quite work, right? Like it feels like this is way lower, this is higher. But is that a case of like, oh, this piece of cobble is sticking out and this one's going in, so there's just more exposed on the bottom side? Maybe, I don't know. It's kind of kind of hard to tell. And then also like how much of this ellipse, like what is the actual angle of this ellipse versus this ellipse? This one looks a little bit tighter, which isn't necessarily inaccurate if you're, you know, doing some pretty forced perspective. But like the difference between these feels pretty extreme. You know, if if this is how much it's distorted between these two ellipses, um, I almost would expect that there's like a fisheye lens happening, and this one would almost be like super wide, right? And that that kind of works, you know, that transition of angles. But like, it's pretty extreme. So either this is like twisting away from the view, or there's like some crazy, you know, um, aspect. I, I don't understand the terminology for lenses and stuff, but like, you can have wide and focused lens and the distance that you're viewing it from can like totally change all these angles and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I need to actually research that stuff to understand it better, because that is actually stuff that I do draw and I use, but I don't fully understand. Um, but based off of this being a small object and I'm not like like right up in its face, it's probably not a good idea to have really extreme foreshortening and um, you know uh, the perspective is different on one end of the object than the other. When you have something where the perspective shifts that much, that is probably an indication that you are right up close to it. You are viewing it from like as close as you can, pretty much. Um, there's actually this really cool camera trick um, that like you can use to like make an entire city look like a tiny little like miniature toy um, or diorama or like display of like little tiny kind of like, you know, um, uh, one millimeter tall cars and stuff like that by like having the perspective like just kind of like is it I think it's like pulled way down so it's as if you're like really far away from this thing but like seeing it in high detail so like if you're looking down at like a model train set and I'm bad at explaining this because I don't know what I'm talking about um, but then if if you're like inside that city and you're like taking a picture of everything, like the buildings are like, you know, coming at kind of, you know, different angles because you're like so close to it. Um, I'm going to stop talking about that because <laughs> I, I think I have a concept of how that works, but I don't know that I'm correct. So I'm not going to try and explain that. Um, but it's a cool trick that I like a lot and it looks super neat. Uh, also uses kind of like, um, focus and like fuzziness, uh, like blur at the edges to kind of like really give this sense of, you know, a macro lens or something, but like for a really big, yeah, <laughs> you get it. It's totally irrelevant to what I'm drawing right now anyway, so, um, but I appreciate that it, I'm not totally just like rambling and confusing people, like what is, what is he even trying to say? Um, yes. Uh, but yeah, that is something that I should research more so that I actually uh, 
understand what I'm working with. Um, so I'm going to pull this further down, I think. Um, I might actually just move this over slightly, just so that I have a little more space to make this clear. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, like the um, a lot of um, stop motion kind of uses techniques um, that that kind of like are definitely requiring that kind of like awesome skill um, to set up shots to use lenses in ways to kind of like convince your brain that like you're seeing things in a totally different perspective than what the reality is. Because, um, like, that's actually a really cool point. Like, um, you know, uh, claymation and stuff is, like, they're really, you know, not very big. Um, but when, like, the way they shoot it, you feel like you're their size. Um, and that's very likely because they know how to kind of, like, have the perspectives trick your brain um, and the, yeah, yeah, again, I'm just going to stop talking about that. <laughs> All right, so uh, before I get too confused with what I'm trying to do, um, all right, so do we feel like this is a scroll case, I think is what I should ask right now. Um, I think that this band in the middle does kind of like help reinforce that, um, as well as these bands here. We didn't need to have them necessarily, but I felt like they actually are a part of that uh, main language when it comes to kind of the scroll cases. Like you have that central band, you have kind of these caps that kind of like add onto the core of that, that case, right? So I feel like those help say what this object is. Um, the part that I'm worried about is if these caps are too nondescript, do we lose out on understanding that these are, that this is a scroll case? Um, so I would like to get some input on that. And I think, you know, ultimately part of it will be how clearly the silhouette is rendered. Um, and maybe actually that's the next step is just blocking in the flat of this to see, okay, we have the silhouette now, does that read even without sketch? Because that's another good test is when you can turn off a sketch and just look at the silhouette, do you know what you're looking at? If you do, awesome. That means that it's going to read very well. Um, so that's always a goal that you should try and strive for in design. Um, all right, so I'm just going to use kind of this gray, purple. Keep it quite light just so that it's easy to see the sketch still. And create a new layer. I'm using my accent brush and I'm just going to overpaint it. Um, I'm not going to overpaint the metal. I always do this. I just like fill in the entirety of the silhouette and then I'm like, okay, time to do these other details that are a different material. And I guess I'll just do a clipping mask on top of this because I already drew it. Um, and then if I want to like add cool texture and detail onto that, at that point I now need to like cut that out so I can do a clipping layer on top of that. Uh, and yeah, it would be so much easier if I just did it as its own separate layer to begin with. And so that is what I will do. Um, so because there is going to be the cap, the metal cap here, and in the middle, I'm wondering what layer those should be on. Because um, right now it feels like here, on the top side of this metal, it is over top of these stones, right? Because you see that kind of visually is blocking the cobblestones behind it. But on this part, the stones that's over top of the metal here. So would we do a separate layer here and a 
separate layer for the metal there, and then a separate layer for the these, and then maybe another one for that, and another one for that. I kind of don't enjoy doing tons of layers, because I like to kind of just jump around when I'm rendering kind of like one material where possible. So if I'm rendering the cobblestone, I want to kind of just do it all in one go. Um, that's not always possible, or at least the easiest way, um, but I enjoy just being able to have that kind of, you know, ease of jumping around. So what I'm thinking is normally when I have like metal detailing on top of something, that metal detail is going to go on the layer on top. Um, and that's generally how it usually works. But because we have all these weird kind of like stones kind of like kind of popping out in front of it, like over here and here, I feel like we'll have better control and it'll be easier to have the metal be the layer behind. And so the stones are going to be on top and we just draw those over top nice and easy. So I'm going to do that. We'll do the metal as the layer underneath the cobblestone. Which means when I draw the metal, I'm going to have to erase the stone in, uh, in areas where the metal is going to show. Uh, so I'll have to do a pass for that, which is fine. But right now, we're just going to worry about getting this silhouette. Um, now one of the things about the caps that we can play around with is if the silhouette is busy down here because there's so many kind of like pieces kind of fragmented and floating around, we can use the, um, the atmosphere to kind of like knock a lot of it back and like create, you know, like depth within it. So, you know, some of these little cobble pieces are behind and others are in front. And right now they're just kind of like one flat kind of scattering of pieces. But if we use um, the mist to kind of like push some into obscurity, that'll really help kind of clean it up. So it's, it's going to be a little hard to see that without the mist. But I'm just going to fill it all in right now. And that might help inform us how much we need to use a device like that to kind of balance the visuals. Um, and like, I should probably do those behind stones on a different layer, actually. Um, this will save me a bit of headache if I do this. Um, and I'll use a different color. First thing, I'm going to erase a few of them. So um, I'll say that this one is a behind, this one's behind, ah, uh, even this one's behind. Same with this. I'm going to do a bunch of them behind. Um, yeah, let's go with this. We can always kind of like remove some, add some, you know, change where they are, what's, what's uh, in the foreground, what's in the background. Um, nice and easy. So we'll just make a decision right now and then tweak it as we go. So those will be the foreground ones, and then we're going to do the background ones. So it's a slightly darker purple, so we can just at a glance see that these are different. Or maybe I want to make them even lighter. So they're more kind of uh, faded out, actually. And again, we, we like will just choose what color we need further in, you know. Um, when I block in stuff, I, I often will have much brighter colors than I'm going to use, um, less saturation in them, because that allows me to see the sketch uh, while I'm still filling in the silhouettes and the flats, because um, that's the most important part of that stage, is being able to kind of like see what the sketch is doing decide where the edges of the, the rendering is going to end up. Um, and this is the main color. Um, and then 
when we actually get to rendering, then I can just kind of swap the color for something more appropriate just right away. Uh, so it's a good method. All right, so that's most of it done. We just need to do the, the top cobble, put a little one there, um, and then we'll we'll turn the sketch off and see what this ridiculous thing looks like. Um, all right, yeah. Ooh, I like that idea, Owen, of like the caps of it. Like they're kind of exploded out, but like actually having that like that kind of like magic kind of pop to kind of like just like how the um, Chrome Celestial Distance Trap. <laughs> I know the name um, has that kind of like kind of uh, pop. That that would actually be pretty cool. Um, so what we could do is instead of having the, um, the, the eclipse behind the center point of the scroll case, we could have it be like at the cap. Will we do it on both ends? Maybe? I don't know. Might be hard to fit that though. Um, on both ends, just because the top one's like real crowded, right? At least I feel like this one's more crowded than the bottom one. I feel like the bottom one I could fit a little bit more kind of cool looking inside the inside of it detail, um, which I think is fine because technically, although in the HUD you're traveling upstairs, if you kind of like take all of it into context, it's actually supposed to be flipped upside down. So if you look on the map and you look into the, the travel location for the Valor Rift, it's actually a mirror of the King's Gauntlet. So it's upside down. So you're actually traveling down into the core of the planet, but like through a rift, right? So the idea that the eclipse kind of like um, the, the power of the eclipse would be at this end if this is kind of like towards the sky, technically, you're actually going that way. Um, so that's kind of an interesting just thought on that that allows us to draw the cool stuff down here, and it's fine. There's often moments where a wizard did it, and that is how I explain many things. But this one actually logics out in my, my brain. Um, not that that's actually of much value because it's confusing up there. Um, all right, so let me just finish blocking in this stuff real quick. Because again, I can just tweak and push and pull and prod and rebalance things, um, and that's easier to do. Once I have more kind of perspective, which at this point will require turning off the sketch. So the sooner I can do that, the better. And we're already at 12 o'clock. Okay, I gotta speed up. I thought I was doing okay for time, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm like feeling like I wanna, I wanna go a little faster, because I do wanna try and get both the scroll case and the treasure chest done on stream, or at least, you know, significantly completed. Um, I feel like it's more common these days where I don't completely do the final version on stream, just because, you know, like, um, there's that whole idea that the the first 80% of a, a project is, it takes like 20% of the time to do, and then the last final 20% of kind of like polish takes another 80% of the time to like get it there. It's not often that I take a piece to that 100% level. Therefore, you know, I may only um, spend 30% of the 
the total percentage of time that I could if I wanted to go full effort on something, right? Um, but being able to do the first 80% of a piece, the, that 20% of the effort as the stream is, is going to get the most bang for the buck for you guys getting to witness stuff coming together and helping design it together. Um, yeah, so this is kind of like the general silhouette and I'm losing out on kind of like the that scroll case cap down here. I think it'll be okay up here. One thing that might help is if I show the metal band. So let me actually pop that in. So I'm going to do this as a layer between these two, even though it could probably be the same layer. Um, I'm just going to do that. I think the metal that I should use for this is going to be more of that kind of like silver gray because a lot of the mice um, have that kind of quality to them. Um, so let me pull up some mice that have some nice metal. There are many. But I want one that's like more kind of the, the detailing. Well, okay, so hmm, there's like the silver kind of like plates with the more gold trim. So do I want gold trim for the scroll case, or do I want silver? I feel like if it's more like big wide plates, then the silver with gold trim makes sense there. But if this is more just the trim for the tower, I'm kind of leaning towards doing the silver instead. Um, Because there are a number of mice as well that just have silver and there's not really the gold banding uh, detailing on it. So, and a lot of a lot of like trim in the game is either like that that bronze or the gold. So it's kind of nice to like focus on the silver instead um, and use that because I feel like I don't tend to stay in that realm and that's kind of neat. Um, and there's also kind of like the the like silver with the blue kind of magic um, etching in it. So, you know, I I feel like that feels more uh, Valor Rift to me than kind of like a lot of gold. Um, so I think I'll keep it in silver then. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like I think there is definitely the value in the gold for. Um, kind of giving that value and, and kind of like um, like treasure feel. But I think what we'll do is we'll use that part for the treasure chest, OK? So to give it that tower feel, I feel like the silver is more the metal of choice for that. And then when we do the chest, I think we'll have kind of like more opportunity for like the big, big kind of like metal plate to, to kind of be pronounced in places. So like the, um, you know, I think there will still be like that cobble, you know, the magical cobblestone quality to the chest, but then like big kind of armored plates like a lot of the mice have. But then because we have the big plates with like the etching, we could have the gold trim on those parts if we want. Um, so I think that's how I'll handle that. I think that works. Okay, so we'll go with the, the silver. Um, and then that kind of keeps it all in this kind of cooler um, range for the color palette, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, so the challenge with this is for the sketch anyways, I'm going to be using two similar colors. Um, so I want to try and... Uh, let's go like lighter now. Uh, this is actually probably fine right here. It's not like a, whoa, look at that beautiful silver color, but it'll be fine for um, understanding what my silhouette is. So right now I'm overpainting behind the cobblestone just so that when I erase away to kind of reveal the metal, I'm not going to have to like go back to this layer and repaint that in because I didn't put enough of it there. So like if I turn off this, you can see just how, how much extra I made sure was there. I don't need that much, but... It's going to have it, just in case. Um, 
because I've annoyed myself greatly by not putting enough. Um, and also, I can kind of test out the ellipses right now, so maybe I should do that. In which case, I'm kind of like, no, that could be a bit wider there. I should probably put that a bit wider. Um, so if I follow this through, yeah, this feels off, right? It's kind of at a bit of an angle. So like this being the through line, I kind of need to go a little more like this way, just a smidge. And I can kind of just figure this out with, with this silhouette. So if I pull that corner up, that's cool. But again, when I turn on the stones, it's going to kind of hide this. So it's not the most useful to figure it out this way, especially since I'm going to have to overpaint behind it. Um, and now this is way wider than it used to be. But I, I think I gave myself enough impression about how to kind of fix that. that I'm okay with it. Um, and one thing I could do is just actually copy and paste the sketch line to make sure that these all kind of like share a similar enough um, angle. So that would be good to have. And then I'll actually fill in this silhouette because there's a chance that there will be that kind of gap. Um, it should actually be closer to the left. There will be that gap where you can see between the stones here and it's kind of like, should I show that metal there? Who knows? I'll leave it in case we like it. Um, but yeah, these ellipses feel wonky, but um, let's go to the sketch. Let's try copying this and pasting it in the different parts to see how they line up. That's not too off, really. And I'll actually leave copy of that there, just so I have that as reference. So this one's way tighter, right? So I think I'll, I'll put that there, and then I can kind of like twist it just a little bit harder, um, just to see if that helps. But like, of course, the ones at the end are actually quite a bit bigger, and the one in the center should be more kind of narrow because these are, the, the end caps are expanding to a wider portion of the tower. And this is just kind of um, a ring that's kind of wrapped around the, the center of the spire. Um, uh, so it's like the, the one at the top feels way wider than the one at the bottom, too, now that I'm looking at it. So I think I want to bulk up the, the bottom. So if I look at that, yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do right now is just erase away the stone so that I can see it in context. And then when I turn off the sketch, hopefully I'll have a real clear idea of what I'm needing to fix. So warm. So warm. Very sunny right now. I'm happy about the warmth though because I actually just got myself a pair of roller blades, inline skates, and oh my goodness, I am so excited to receive those and be able to just kind of like skate around in an empty parking lot somewhere. <laughs> uh, Alex and I love to go ice skating, and due to the pandemic, we did not feel that it was a very pertinent idea to go out, because there are a lot of public rinks, um, and they're not absolutely massive, so it'd be hard not to kind of like skate through each other's airspace. Um, and so, you know, that doesn't seem like an ideal situation. 
so we did not get to skate at all this year, and we very much miss that activity. So being able to inline skate will at least kind of like, hopefully, provide that, that nice experience. And one of the cool things about inline skating is you can just kind of like pretty much go anywhere with those. Well, not anywhere, but um, way more options than, than ice skating. Uh, that's, that's the hope anyways. All right, um, so now we have kind of like the silhouette where we can actually kind of like take a look. It's very lumpy. Uh, and I think I actually want to make it a little less lumpy so that it's a little more clear what it is. Um, so what I'm thinking is the the central tower portion. I'm going to actually like take out those kind of um, uh, big cobble bumps, uh, at least for now. I might end up bringing some back, but right now I'm not feeling that kind of like tower quality out of it. It feels more just kind of like this weird kind of like, uh, I don't know, like someone made some strange um, veggie wrap and like, you know, rolled it in kind of like one of those rice paper things and it's like really kind of tightly bound and kind of lumpy and, and weird. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of these, pull this in a little bit cleaner, and just kind of make sure that we get what's happening here. It's this kind of like structurally sound tower, at least in this part. Um, so if I turn off the sketch, it's kind of like still not very clear. So if I try out something like this, where I just create a nice strong through line, and then I just interrupt that silhouette just a little bit to create that texture every now and then, but like overall the, the shape is like one straight clean line that will read better. So there's my like original original sketch this one here. I'm going to bring this to the top because um, I technically could actually just follow this a little closer. Um, and so what that is going to allow me to do is have the um, the caps be wide again because like the top one's okay. The bottom one I'm not feeling like it's that cap yet. And I think because the, the middle um, tube is just too kind of like not clear. It's not. It's not like this clean, tight kind of tower structure. Um, so if I if I fix that, I pull these in to match more so what uh, the general scroll cases feel like. That's probably good. And now, like, look at how off this cuff is. Now that I'm kind of like seeing this in that context, I'm like, wow. I I just did not do my sketch very carefully. I just kind of like went for it. Um, so that's a big deal. Um, already I actually feel like I see it stronger now and why it was feeling off. Um, so let me flip this and it's like, okay, I still see it. That's good. This is very good actually. Um, so I need to trim a bit of this here. And Boom, pull that in, boom, pull that in. Um, so that's actually good. I think that's, that is stronger. Um, I think this can come out just a bit more here. I don't tend to like draw using just a silhouette, but this is actually something that is not a bad idea to do. Especially when you're trying to like express um, something that's really small but needs to read. Um, being able to just draw it all in just like big flat shapes is actually a really good way to start it. 
So even with the values being so subtle, I can see a little bit better what I'm going for here, and that's awesome. Okay, so I'm feeling better, feeling better about that. Um, I'm actually gonna pull this up just a smidge here. Now you can barely see what I did there probably. That's good. All right, and yeah, I think maybe I don't want these kind of stones to really kind of like break that silhouette nearly as strongly, right? Um, I think I was just going too crazy with the, the overlapping and it was harder to see what was happening on that surface and transition of that. Um, I think that reads so much stronger now and um, I can still kind of like go around and bust up the silhouette in a couple of places. So like if I just take a nick out of that there um, and here already you can barely see it but that can kind of convey like yes there is uh, like a, a more kind of crunchy surface it's not it's not perfectly smooth um, and trying to make these feel a little bit more like stones kind of constructing a tower is probably a good thing and I can have like one just kind of floating off this but because the rest of it is like a nice clean shape I think that works great actually yeah I'm cool with that okay so flip it again still good awesome all right so I'm feeling better about that I think the bottom oh no the sun it's moved why earth why do you spin like this um hang on. I'm gonna adjust my curtain ah it's so bright I'm blinding myself Whew. okay <coughs> all right um half an hour, I'm going to go on lunch, but we're going to get this to the point where we've started rendering or maybe even finished. I don't think I'll be able to do that fast, but that would be awesome if I can. Um, oh, it's so warm. Sorry. Make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Even though it's not like moving very fast at all, I'm so bad at like looking over and making sure. Uh, okay. Oh, one of the things that I don't need yet, but is something that I will want. And I've done this for so new correction layer, hue and saturation, turn the saturation all the way down. Then turn this into a color layer. Um, so this is my current hack to be able to view the, uh, the piece in grayscale um, because unfortunately I don't have the kind of like same color profile trick that I do for Photoshop where I can just like hit a hotkey and it doesn't actually change the image but it changes the um, preview of color space and shows me like a true grayscale version of it. Uh, it's just the values, um, but this is the closest I've been able to get. Um, and so like some colors don't respect their values properly when this is applied. So like uh, this gets slightly darker than it should. And like this is fine, but um, it's better than not having the ability to view stuff in grayscale, at least for my methodology. Um, it, I greatly benefit from being able to sample if if stuff reads as a you know black and white image essentially um, I've never had a case where I've had an image and I'm kind of like is this good enough and then I like turn it into grayscale and I kind of like see oh I could make this a little bit darker or a little bit lighter to like make the contrast read better how I want it to so like if I want to draw the eye over here I increase the contrast if I want to distract all that detail and kind of like knock that back it's like too noisy I lower the contrast just using the values 
and when I go back into the full color mode, it just looks better. Um, and it's just a cleaner, better image. So I've never had a situation where I've used that technique and it's made it worse. So it's a nice little tool to have in the, the toolkit, I feel. Um, so just like the canvas flipping, it's just a, a good practice to try out. You'll be able to see things you don't normally see. So <clears throat> with this one, the um, the tower up here is like yay wide, and it like turns into kind of like walls going vertically, right? So when it's in the middle, it's kind of like narrow, and then the band, the metal band, kind of like widens it out, and then beyond that, it's kind of like back to being this kind of tower shape. Um, and though it, it kind of very quickly breaks off from that, up here, it, it kind of still reads that way, right? Um, I think I'm actually going to make that even stronger. I just kind of like really making sure that we have a bit more flat to work with, right? So if I turn off the sketch, you can kind of like more clearly see that, right? Oh, I get it. There is this kind of like cylinder and then a wider cylinder. Cool. And then since it's kind of like forming, it's fine to have it like breaking apart and the the object is becoming less uh, less clear, like there is less just structure to the shape. That's totally fine. But where it first starts, I feel like there's a nice value in showing that like, oh, it's actually that, that's a cylinder. Um, and down here, I feel like we don't have that happening quite right. So I'm going to do that down here. Um, where I try and capture this kind of situation. So I'm trying to roughly get it to be the same kind of thickness. Um, I, I don't need to be absolutely perfect, but it'd be good to match it relatively closely. As long as your brain is like, yes, these are the same thicknesses, that's fine. Um, so I think I want to thicken the top up just a bit, which might change kind of the metal band there. It's fine. Um, but like having there be like a noticeable difference between those two surfaces is just useful. If they're like too closely related, then it's kind of harder to see that relationship. It's still doable, but um, being able to kind of like have it be more obvious, like this band sticks out a tiny bit. This cap sticks out way more, and I want that to be clear. Um, but like here, this band sticks out a tiny amount, but then this cap sticks out a tiny amount too. It's kind of not as obvious, right? So I want to make sure it's much more obvious. So pull that out to there, let's say. Um, and then just making sure that I have this kind of like cylinder shape, at least for a moment. Um, and I also want to balance it centrally too. So get rid of some of the rubble, since I'm probably just going to want to tweak it anyways. Um, okay, I want to try and make sure that ellipse is working too. So as you can see, it's kind of like a lot of pushing and pulling and making sure that it kind of works. And I actually need to expand the metal here. That was probably what was limiting me. I'm kind of like... Well, the metal doesn't go out that far, so maybe I shouldn't render it out that far. How about I just move the metal out? Um, so that does actually feel a little bit more clear now. I'm just going to clean up these scrubbles. 
also going to show more of the underside of the, the metal here because we have a pretty low angle, so why not? Do some overpaint here. And here. So, you know, we're like underneath the object looking up at it, so we're going to see this kind of an angle. Um, but then here, because we're, again, same angle, looking underneath, looking up, this is going to be a much shallower kind of view at this um, plate that's angled. So it's kind of almost more kind of angled perpendicular to us. So maybe something a little closer to that, maybe. And then this part here. might have kind of like a thinner thinner perspective of it. I think that I don't want to go too thin on it, but it kind of like helps sell that like how much it's kind of popped out by like showing us kind of how much of the, the surface up here is visible and how little of the surface on the bottom side is visible. So I say this is good enough. Again, you know, um, we don't want to over overdo it. This is a small little item, and you know, when you view it in game, even if it's all wonky and bad, it's still going to look cool, and people are still going to be excited about it. So I don't need to beat myself up over not absolutely perfect angles of every single little element. You know, it's just a self-defeating thing to try and just a bad waste of resources if I just go too crazy on it which I can do so I try to avoid so it's just something I like to do with my ADHD is uh, over I, I hyper fixate on, uh, on things at times um, Happens every stream, but it's a pretty good perspective on on that. If you're ever curious, that's probably what you're seeing. Um, my my brain hyperfixating on small details, uh, but okay. So looking at this now, I feel like I get that this is a scroll case, and that was kind of like the crux of: is this working? Is this not? Um, so I think it is working. Um, I like the rhythm of the kind of like bits at the bottom. It feels like it's incomplete, but it's forming. So I'm happy with how that looks. The top, it's close-ish, but it's not that same kind of feels like that is happening. Like I, I don't feel like it has that same kind of like coming together or falling apart feeling. Um, so if we wanted to do that kind of like pop a power where it's like blasting the walls apart, we would change the shapes of things. Um, and it would probably be on the bottom one. But right now the bottom one's kind of working for me, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll just leave it and, and save myself that extra effort, and I can put that towards the chest, making that look also really cool. So what I think I'm going to do real quick is just start to kind of tweak a bit of the... Um, the rhythm here. So <clears throat> when I say rhythm, it's kind of <clears throat> the the like randomness. Um, it can either be like so random that it's like just too chaotic, or it can be too patterned um, to the point where it, like it's not interesting, or you know it becomes predictable. Um, so what I want to do is make it more random looking, but really kind of like carefully design it to be random. Um, and so what's working well for this is there is more gathering where it's actually kind of like building itself. And then the smaller, more spaced out pieces are further away. So it kind of implies that there's almost this gravity pulling it together where the bigger stuff is getting there and 
the smaller stuff is less kind of like affected or further away or just there's this kind of gradient of, of sizes of distance and it looks chaotic and random but it's actually more balanced um, uh, and so I want kind of bigger more kind of closely put together pieces closer together up here and then as it goes out, it gets more spaced out, smaller, more haphazard feeling, that kind of thing. And then also, um, there's just kind of like this kind of like shape that I have going on here. Right? Um, and here right now, it's getting closer to something, but it's kind of more, you know, just feeling a little more kind of like too many uh, different things happening. So I think I want to kind of like choose like maybe the outsides are forming or maybe the inside is forming or the, the side closest to us I suppose would be more accurate. Um, I think I like the three quarters I, on the left side forming because like what that does is it mirrors this side because this side is like the the right side over here is forming and on this one the left side could be forming so it's almost kind of got this like feeling of like twisting in a way um, by kind of like being opposites and also just the the like the um, <clears throat> the canvas itself there's more room to play around on the left side up here and you know, it's getting quite tight in the top right. So I'm going to pull away here um, and <clears throat> just create that kind of rhythm where it's more weighted to the left side. It's coming together over here. So bigger, more kind of connected pieces, and then they kind of start to drift apart. It's always good to have like um, big, medium, and small shapes in relationship to each other. So like I have kind of like a bigger shape here and to make that look good and interesting I put like a really small shape beside that and then like not too far away, still close enough that you can compare them, I put a medium shape. And so like these just being around each other actually make e the other parts look more interesting because there is that difference between them. Um, but it's also kind of balancing itself. Uh, I'm gonna go open a window as soon as I start lunch break and just like stand on the balcony or something because I need some cool air in here. It is a toasty day. And like things being perfectly spaced out is also really uncomfortable looking at times unless that's the kind of like design quality that you want to go for. I want there to be more kind of like this idea of like an explosion or forming together so like things being closer together near the center and then kind of like spacing out further away just has that feeling of things kind of like are kind of being pulled in towards the core or they've blasted out in the lightest smallest material got ejected the fastest or something right um, but if they were all evenly spaced, then it kind of just, you don't get that energy between the, uh, the, the static images of like, what is their relationship? How did they kind of, you know, did they just all just perfectly drift apart evenly or something? Or why are they spaced so perfectly? Um, our brains are like incredible at finding patterns too. So if there is like a really like if if a pattern exists our brain can see it 
um, and we may not even realize it. Uh, so something to try and notice if you can. It's hard. You got to train your your eye to kind of like pick up on things like that. Because even though like we may not realize that we're seeing those things, our subconscious is kind of just logging that away. Um, again, it's kind of the idea of like when you flip an image and you feel that it looks wrong, there, it looked better before. That's literally our subconscious knowing something is wrong, but we don't have the trained eye to see what actually is wrong. But now you know that something's off and now I have to look around and figure it out and like learn what to see that that, that is causing that feeling. Um, okay, so 10 minutes to lunch and we've managed to get the flats. I'm happy with this though. I see the scroll case. I see the qualities of the tower in it. Um, I think that this is actually effective. Um, you have just like a single stone just kind of sliding off just a little bit. Um, but uh, do the opposite there. There you go. Just created a pattern. Um, these relate to each other. Uh, all right. Um, so I think that I want to break up a little bit of the silhouettes here and there, but I think for the most part, I don't want to overdo that because in the sketch, I kind of went ham on it and it like really made the object lose what it is. The essence of the, the, the scroll case itself didn't come through. So um, I'm going to use the sketch to kind of like render the cobble because I think the cobble will look good with this kind of like, you know, patterning and shape and like I kind of already have that kind of curve going with the the way that the rocks are like facing us um, in the center of this but then at the edges they kind of turn away and they're they're narrower as they kind of roll away from us. Um, so the sketch is fine but um, I think that it might be more a case of, you know, like restricting the sketch to the silhouette and now I can kind of see more of what this should look like when it's rendered. So I think that's pretty okay. Um, I think another thing we could do is try tossing in the backdrop and that kind of like um, the eclipse lighting <clears throat> to see how it'll look before we kind of like commit to that rendering. So, oh it's so boring. Um, I'm going to do a new layer, and this will be like the backdrop. And so it's got a very dark purple, very kind of rich. Um, and so the question is sort of do we use uh, a full, kind of like filled in backdrop, right? Something like this, uh, where it kind of like uh, is cropped, and it's fine. I think for the most part people are going to look at this item in the cartographer store, so it kind of like just being this window uh, or this item that has kind of like a backdrop is going to look okay in that situation. And then like when they go to open it, um, that views, it might look a little weird with this kind of like filled in silhouette where others don't have that, and that's kind of where I'm kind of like, ah, I don't know if I want it to crop anywhere. Um, but it might be easier to kind of create this cool atmosphere around it. So, let's see. Um, I'm going to pull up the view for scroll cases real quick. Just so I can kind of like remember what that should look like in game. And I'll be able to kind of like make more of a decision of if it should. Be vignetted or not? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm still in the tower. I should probably go back to the birthday party, huh? Um, so I'll go to map scrolls. Yeah. Okay. So in this view, they really do have a lot of vignetting. Like almost every single one has that kind of like cloud of magic, and some of them are really they got a lot of pop to it. So. 
I think this is still totally, um, we can create that element of that kind of rift mist behind it pretty effectively uh, without it having to kind of like get cropped right at the edges. So I'm, I'm feeling like we should be able to pull this off without having to kind of like go right up to the edges. So I'm going to try seeing if maybe if I use my occlusion eraser real big and just kind of go all the way around. Because this eraser has like very strong fall off to it. Oop, forgot I can't do straight lines in Clip Studio. <laughs> cool. Um, it was very kind of extreme fall off. So that's okay. Um, and now kind of clean that to not look like a weird icon, I guess. Kind of has an icon feel to it. Also, I'm going to go around um, with my. Oh, the sun is hiding. Love it. No, no, stay there, Cloud. No. Okay, fine. Um, just making sure that there is absolutely no um, slight kind of hazy pixels right at the edge. I want a full vignette. Um, now I'm just going to kind of soften this to not be a weird box. And this will kind of give us the, the playground for creating this awesome looking backdrop for it. I think this will be fine. I don't think we need to like put this in a, its own pure environment. I think just having this kind of like um, cool backdrop, uh, just bubble of rift magic will be enough to kind of create that very cool Eclipse, I hope. Oof. Ah, Charlie. Jeez. Just trying to move your paws. Don't don't be like that. Excuse you. She got me good. Ah, Alright. <laughs> she has this like obsession with like putting her paws on my keyboard. Normally, I can just like flip her around and roll her around, but for whatever reason, she's like, well, I'll just stick you with my claws instead. Okay, so. Obviously, the colors and values look really bad because they're all so close together. Like, if I pull up the, um, that, like, uh, look at this in grayscale view, it's kind of like hard to see this now, right? Because they're all so similar. Um, but I'm going to have the background go darker, I think is good. Um, because we want, well, actually, now that I think about it, if we're going to have kind of like this eclipse effect, having the tower itself be the silhouette, and then the light is kind of coming out from behind, is actually how to achieve that, right? I tripped the trap. She got me. Um, okay, so we'll use the the kind of like darker backdrop to kind of have that that like energy static nebulous magic kind of pop on that, and then we'll have the light kind of like um, cresting behind the scroll case and that will also give us some really like nice opportunities to have like the um, <clears throat> the the kind of rim lighting kind of glow on just like a couple of edges of the cobblestone and like help describe the actual texture of it and yet we'll still be able to kind of keep a little more clean shapes to it so I, I'm, I'm thinking this is gonna work um, but first let's actually try putting in that that um, eclipse kind of light because uh, I think that's kind of like a very important quality of the image. Uh, so let's see how to do that is I'm going to make a new layer above the backdrop go right here. Um, actually I'm going to just put these in a folder just so I can manage these. So this is going to be backdrop. 
and I'm going to just go for pure white right now. And hard edged pure white, and just kind of like create a rim light around this. Um, and this will kind of like fall off in specific ways. Um, and bleed out in specific ways to kind of create this neat kind of, here I'll actually grab a screenshot of like the, the light quality that I want to capture here, but maybe not in grayscale. Um, so this is of course from the, uh, the total eclipse, um, but that's kind of like that quality I want for the light. Um, so I'm just going to quickly block block this in and then I am going to take lunch because it is already one o'clock. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I'll be doing two items today as much as I was like, maybe I can do it. I just, I got to get all the details just right. Uh, and that takes a little bit extra time and effort, <clears throat> especially when I'm kind of like talking about it and then I like end up discovering something because I'm talking about it that I might not have really thought of otherwise. Uh, so like this would be like catch light there. Yeah, so then what we could do is maybe I'll just do this on another layer in case I don't like it. Um, I'm kind of like, how should I do this? I want it to kind of uh, like come off of this like rays or something. Like something like that might look neat. Um, and then I'll even pull that back to be a bit more gentle. But, oh, doing that as a brush stroke. Oops. Instead of erasing it. So I just want that to be like really gentle. Um, and then we'll do cool stuff with like having more color effects in kind of like the fringes of the light. And then like this will also kind of bleed over top of, uh, of it too. So like it's so bright that you know it's it's kind of actually blasting out everything. What is this? Oh, I see. Clipping ants. What's that? Something like that where it's so bright it's actually kind of like overtaking your vision in a sense and kind of, you know. Um, so this overall is going to go quite a bit darker. So let's do that real quick. Um, maybe not that dark, but something in between could be good. Um, and I'll just lighten. No, I do need that to be dark. So I think this would need to be quite dark. Um, but yeah, something in this area initially. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I feel like this as an essence is kind of like speaking to the, the Valor Rift gauntlet, you know? Like it, I think that is what the tower would be represented as. So it's it's not totally balanced how I want it to be, obviously, but you know, at this point, I think it's good enough that we could start to like render the detail. Um, but also what's kind of beneficial to this design is because I'm creating this kind of silhouetted piece, um, I think that I won't actually need to or be able to over render stuff too easily because it's gonna be so dark. Um, I think what'll be fun is just kind of like describing 
the texture of things right at the fringe where the light is kind of like rolling over the edge. Um, so I get to like have lots of cool color pops and and uh, but like the bulk of it I won't be able to kind of go crazy on. So I think that's good. Yes, fine enough. Um, but for now I'm gonna go on lunch. Um, I'm gonna come back at two o'clock. So. Uh, in 55 minutes, I'll put up a timer so you know when I'm going to return exactly and can plan your break accordingly or whatnot. Oh, it's so much more purple on this screen. But that's just my OBS preview, so... Hopefully it looks okay for you. Um, it's definitely a little more toned down on my, my actual screens, but... Um, when this is, you know, outputted, it'll look how it's supposed to. Um, but yeah, there, there's some weirdness around purples and color space uh, a lot of the time. So uh, OBS just is one of those things that can have a little challenge with it. But saving is a good idea. That's brilliant. Let me do that. All right. And this is going into... I'm trying to like improve my organization of file structure, so I'm kind of like, should I like make an entire new structural setup just for this one item because it's like an old area, I don't have it set up that way? I'll do it. All right, and we are back. Welcome back. Hello. Lunch is done. All right, so where we left off, we had locked in our scroll case and kind of started a loose backdrop, trying to figure out kind of like the value composition in a sense. Um, I'm going to try and emulate the uh, eclipses that I have going on in this image, as well as that kind of like color spray feeling, which I think is really quite nice. Um, so I just kind of loosely blocked that in so I could kind of have a sense of that. Um, I'm going to have the metal also kind of get quite a bit darker to try and capture that feeling as well. So ultimately it's kind of like it was just light blasting from behind, so I feel like we're going to not get a lot of light on that metal. Um, but we'll have to play around with that, really get the right feeling for it. I could, I could imagine this getting extremely dark, right in the center at least. Um, so I think what I'll do is uh, actually work up the backdrop more to kind of bring it into the kind of like the correct amount of color and saturation and, and like that magical kind of rift background feeling. So I'm going to... Oh, treasure map filled up. Um, to take a look at the mice. I gotta move to the rift section. There we are. All right. So I just wanted to pull up some examples of the uh, the rift mouse backdrop. Try and capture that. So it's very kind of like dark purple with the light blue nebula kind of bursting and and kind of just emanating. Why not? That's an interesting point, uh, generic potato, yeah. Um, by kind of like really making this just this incredible looking, glorious scroll case when they, you know, collect their reward and it's just kind of like maybe not the most kind of like epic reward 
Um, that might be kind of like odd. Um, so that's a good point. Hmm. Do we need to kind of play it down a little? I'm not actually sure what the rewards are though. So I, I can't verify that it's like, you know, I, I don't think we're gonna want it to be like bland, like not good, you know, uh, not worth doing, obviously. Why would we even bother to make it? Um, I think, you know, maybe we don't always kind of like get it exactly the best kind of like reward and challenge and everything for every player, but um, there should at least be kind of, yeah, like um, this map is kind of like good for this experience. Um, and so, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we would end up making it feel too epic to kind of capture that feeling, but that might not be too bad. Um, I feel like I would rather err on the side of like, it looks cool and I like the look of it. Uh, and like, maybe it looks cooler than the contents inside, but like it still looks cool, so that's neat. Uh, versus, um, you know, it's, it looks okay, but I don't know, like, I guess I enjoy just making stuff look cool versus how uh, epic it should look technically. Um, I don't know if that's a problem or not. <laughs> kind of something that I should probably be able to kind of make a call on though. Like, are we worried about giving the wrong impression? Because that's actually a very valid point. Not, not wrong to kind of consider that. Uh, so. I don't know, maybe this will inspire the devs to, to make it even better. Um, yeah, that's true. If it doesn't have that kind of backlight, it won't be this like, oh, kind of moment. So we could definitely try it without that kind of like, you know, blast of uh, kind of like epicness, um, which is fair because, you know, the, the, um, the gauntlet, like the Valor Rift Tower itself, is not, you know, defined by the eclipsing kind of uh, stuff going on, right? Um, obviously, the eclipse is a very significant figure in it, and I assume will probably be a part of the maps. That's just my guess, but, um, you know, I don't know if that's going to be the focus of the map. I think it's more about, like, the tower and kind of, like, a whole swath of characters in there, probably. Um, or more, maybe the rewards are more closely tied to the tower. I don't know. Um, so if we want, that's a good solution to kind of pull it back. If we kind of like take take some of that kind of like true epicness from it. Um, but you know what? Actually, I'm going to just throw this at Dave, who might be able to give me a... Like, maybe we should pull it back or not. Um, so I'll just toss this his way, see what he thinks. Also, um, I'm just going to paste this over before I do a copy of a Larry link, and I will share that. So message sent, we'll see what he says, and then if he's like, um, yeah, maybe we should change it, but I don't know, I kind of feel like it might just be like, it looks cool though. Uh, just, ooh. Sorry, just looking at people sharing art.
and let me grab that Larry link. Copy and paste into chat. There we go. Larry link. All right. Oh yeah, the um, how dark the Clip Studio backdrop is. You mean? Yeah, that that kind of like pops it out even more, maybe. Um, yeah, um, so I might actually try and do this spiral staircase after all. If we have kind of like a dark backdrop, that might be okay to be able to try and show. It's just kind of almost these like glowing stairs that kind of wrap around it. Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. Might be a good way to step back from the epicness. That's a good point. Yellow colored step near the top. Oh, the gilded steps. I like it. One golden brick. <laughs> All right. Interesting. All right. Um, no response from Dave yet. So we'll see. Um, okay, so. I think that I'm just going to work the backdrop a bit more anyways. Um, and I want to, let's just kind of create, a darker background. And now this is like pumping up the light even more, right? But um, I'm kind of purposely making it this dark just so that I can uh, have this kind of electric blue dance across it. Um, so this probably color that would work. Um, and I want my nebula brush. Oof. So one of the things about Clip Studio is the brush importing is not perfect. Um, it's not bad, but it takes a little bit of adjusting to. Okay. Particle density may keep it lower. Maybe not that. Um, brush tool, stroke, gap. Way bigger. Oh my goodness. Um, maybe spray effect off. Kind of. Uh, 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 uh. Continue spraying off. Hey, okay, there we go. Wait. Obviously, need much bigger gap than that. Good old 38. That's actually not bad. Um, okay, so now I need it to rotate properly. Right now, I think it's following the direction of the brush. Uh, um. Where is that brush size? I definitely want it big. Don't need color mixing, color jitter. Probably under brush tip angle. There we go. Um, random. 100% random. Yeah. Okay, that's that's actually better. Big house. Oh, okay, right. Make that at 100. Um, uh, I'll try adjusting my gap. Why not? I think the brush density is kind of like how opaque it is. So if I put it to like 100, it's quite strong. If I put it down to like 8, yeah, okay, it's like the opaqueness. Um, I'll have it like up at like 80. I'll have it down at like 62. That's fine. 
Um, oh, it's also set to pen pressure anyways, which is good. I think that's actually what I want, because then I can gently press and it kind of just... Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Good. All right, so far looking good. Random flipping sounds great. No spray effect. Don't know if that does much. Ribbon is interesting, but I'm not going to do that right now. I should play more with that. I think there is some cool stuff that I could figure out. Uh, texture I don't want right now, not for this brush. Okay, I think that this is pretty set up now. And I'm going to save all settings as default. Cool. All right. Neat. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I think that's what it needed to be. All right. And then I'm going to get like some nice pink in here just to get a little more dimension in the color, I think. Get like a nice big one, maybe. Zap. All right. And then a real. Real blast of blue. Again, like these are small items, so I kind of want there to be enough variation and like collection of color and and brightness and darkness to be able to pick out these details. Uh, so now I'm kind of thinking I might assist the read of this by erasing some of the areas so that it's kind of a little bit more spider webby. You know, the darks are a bit darker, the lights are a bit lighter, something like that. Just trying to provide a little bit of clarity to these. It's not bad. I might try bringing one more. Oh, it's still set to erase. There, that's perfect. That's what I wanted. It's random and I got it. All right, awesome. Uh, I think I got a message now. Yes. Dave said he's not really worried about the illustration creating expectations of rewards. So I think he's kind of in, in line with the like, if it looks cooler, make it that way, because it's cooler. Which I think is a pretty good policy. But I'll, um, I'll maybe pull back a little bit on the, the kind of like epic lighting just a smidge. We'll see. Yes. It will do. All right. Yes. That works. OK. Just kind of like using a little bit of the um, this color pop to kind of like make the edges fade a little less kind of uniformly. So like if we look at this in grayscale now, 
you can see that where the kind of nebula is creeping in, it kind of eats away at that dark background, right? So it's it's kind of useful to kind of use that to help vignette those those edges, just kind of make it less kind of like really soft, square eraser kind of situation. So I think that's good. Um, cool. All right. Good. 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 I feel like okay. If we can wrap this up, I might be able to just start the sketch on the. The treasure chest, but like I really actually will have to leave at a certain point because um, I have to get to like a drop off zone for like some packaging stuff. So when that closes at ridiculous hour, so I also have to bike out there. But it's also a beautiful day, so I'm excited for that. Uh, uh, uh. Right. So I think we can just start to kind of like bring the rendering into this a little bit. So how to kind of like go to the next stage. What I'm thinking is what if we do that kind of color, color, color burst um, and kind of get that lighting feeling really good. And then when I'm happy with that kind of like the design of the light, um, using that to kind of inform the the like light bouncing off of the surfaces and just kind of like make it feel more three dimensional, um, bring a little bit more of the kind of like the correct kind of textures to things, because um, like this hazy bottom part. Um, not quite working. Uh, that like gray versus this like super saturated purple. Um, yeah, let's start with the color pop on this. And now I'm doing this in Clip Studio. I have kind of my own method for it in um, Photoshop, so I'm gonna have to basically discover how to do this. I, I think. So what I might try is just kind of using a color layer and just getting some really saturated colors and like feeling feeling free to get like pretty strong with it. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back quite a lot. Um, but this is uh, something that I think is a nice final kind of pass on an image where you like kind of create a little color harmony in a piece by actually going over it with kind of like uh, a very gentle wash of colors up. Um, and it can kind of like just add a little bit of, I don't know, just interesting life to a piece. So instead of like a material always being kind of like just one color, there's just like little greens and purples and pinks just kind of gently influencing it and adding a little bit of interest to it. Um, and that, that might be overboard, but now if I kind of like really pull that back, it's very subtle, right? Um, and I kind of want to focus it mostly in the edges of the, uh, the light falling off. Um, another thing that I think will help is getting that chromatic aberration to look right. don't have the same technique. I might be able to do it the same way, but I'll have to figure that out.
Mm -hmm. um, so light. What kind of settings do I have, if any? Oh, I could um, maybe mask out a color. Or just change. Like if I duplicate this and then do a, uh, OK, yeah, I'm going to try something, see what this does. All right, so if I, There's so many different ways to attempt this technique. I kind of want to try one that I really don't expect will work. So I'm going to go like full cyan, but then I'm going to turn it into a add layer. And then I'm going to take the other one and take it to the opposite end of the spectrum. and Fill that, and then turn that into an add layer. And then if I offset these, right, it actually doesn't do too terrible at it. It's not perfect, but it's creating that effect, you know. We got red and cyan. And then them adding together creates the white, right? Because they're like opposite colors. But it's not perfect because they're not actually like properly. Maybe it's more like that color or like a magenta. Um, so it's not perfect. That kind of works. Alternately, there's probably. Like if I use a correction layer or turn the, let's see. So if I had, I'll just duplicate this one as well. Turn that off. Set this to white. OK, so we're back where we started. But now, if I layer. color balance if I like take all of the I need to lock the layer. I don't know. I'm I'm totally just experimenting now and this is the wrong time to do this, but hey what why not? Um edit tonal correction. Because I want to do it on this layer, not make a new layer. Um, so if I do I'm thinking it could be like color balance, it could be hue and saturation potentially. I'm going to try color balance and blue. Let's just take out and crank up. Maybe this be the highlights. Might not work because it's just it's a very gentle white layer. So using my preview, I'm not really seeing much difference there. So I don't think that is the technique there. It might work, but like I think I'm just doing that a little bit wrong. All right, so let's just try level corrections and then go to red and turn down the red. So now I have just the blue and the green, right? Which is probably the same as that, because I'm just that good. Um, and then I should probably du have duplicated the white layer first, but whatever. Just use this. And now try that again. And I really feel like I'm kind of like not making much sense at this point. I always feel like after lunch, I'm kind of like lost 
in terms of like I know what I'm doing and I'm off in my own little world, but like people trying to follow, it's always like a weirder, worse experience or something. Did I do tone curve? No, I did levels. Tone correction, level correction. And then instead of red, I'm gonna try blue, turn that, and green. And so it'll just be the red channel. So I have my I mean pretty much feels the same. This is a little more purple, because I ended up shifting this red after, but I think I had it pretty much right. Um so okay. Having that offset. It does work. Um all right, so Maybe add can be a slightly different type lightning. Looks the same. Can I adjust both these at the same time? Color dodge. Is this working? Glow dodge. Ooh. It is working. Add. That looks bad now. Add glow. <gasps> Ooh. Not bad. The one thing about Clip Studio is it's really hard to like just go through all the uh, layer effects really easily. Just kind of like get a nice feel for them. You have to actually like go down the list, clicking each one. I would expect these to punch up more. Some of them, anyways. Like a darker color, obviously would not get brighter. Hmm. Light kind of works. All right. Well, I think we can work with lightness fine. Screen is fine. Color dodge is actually maybe the best. This is cool too, though. That looks. Pretty neat, but it it kind of like is more inside of the um, the cloud. Um, but like that does look neat. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. We have slipped into the darkest timeline. Uh, all right, so yeah, the ad doesn't look nearly as good as it used to. Add glow is good though. That's actually pretty strong. Add glow. Or color dodge, not nearly as nice now. Glow dodge is cool. Add glow. Glow dodge. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the add glow. Just because I, I feel like I'll have a stronger control over that white light coming out of it. Whereas before it was kind of like, um, a lot more of the uh, the cloud behind color taking over. It looked really pretty though, but I think this gets that nice kind of you know um, mixture of colors everywhere. And yeah, I think that's working. Um, I'm gonna shift it a little bit. I feel like it kind of lost the the center a bit. I like it. Um, let's take a look at what this is in grayscale. Okay, so right now um, the readability is like not terrible. The backdrop is a little bit dark. Um, so what I might do is I could knock this back. Because I want, I want like the the like mid tone and highlight and and like dark tones to kind of like stand out pretty effectively. So obviously the scroll case is like the dark kind of uh, values, and then the mid tone is like the backdrop that like 
middle gray and then the highlights and um, the lighting and kind of like the rim light is my brightest value and by kind of like having that kind of like structure where it's like very clearly there's like the three separate values even if it's like super tiny you can still see a little bit of what's going on um, so that can kind of still read just that way which is cool um, and it creates a stronger composition when you kind of like plan your value structure that way um, and then also I've created the highest contrast at the object I'm taking the darkest value and surrounding it by the brightest value and so that is the highest level of contrast right whereas the the background it's kind of like you know the brightest on the medium so like and it, it kind of has a, a soft transition into it, so it kind of doesn't have that same kind of um, excitement around it. Yeah, the, the grayscale measure here isn't too bad. It's not perfect, but I feel like some of the um, brightness of the, the tones gets a little bit lost but it's much better than if this were just kind of like a normal and see how much different that feels and then go back to color it's quite a bit closer it's definitely not perfect I wonder if in this situation if hue is better I think it's exactly the same yeah it's the same all right this rate, I'm not even going to finish rendering this. Um, so this is the, oh, it's got to save itself real quick. This is the, the stone, nope, that's the metal. This is the stones. Okay. So I'm going to take this purple um, oh, I should have actually taken a screenshot of the HUD while I was still there. Time to travel back. Sound my horn before I do. Oh, he's already taken on hunt. Right, now I'm going to disarm my cheese because my horn is about to be ready again. Disarm. Camp. Travel. That I wished. All right. So I want to kind of like capture the color quality a bit better. I was using kind of just placeholder colors initially. Wow, that's definitely way too saturated. That is too bright. That is closer. A little more blue. That is much better. Okay. So that's a little closer to what I want. It's on the inside of the tower. I'm feeling like that might be in shade a bit. Um, and I want the light to kind of wrap around the sides of this. So I'm going to go up to this layer. This is the sketch. Um, and so now I have a layer on top of the tower. Uh, First, I'm just going to bring the color into a better space. So I'm going to lighten it up a bit, but I'm also going to go more blue and take out some saturation. Sorry, phone was just doing a thing. Um, okay, so I don't want to brighten all of it that far. You can do the sides of the turrets up there, maybe the sides here, but I do want the center to remain quite dark so that that silhouette is still in effect. Yes. 
especially where that light is kind of blasting it from behind, you know, so it's just overpowering at those edges. Um, cool. Okay, so that's kind of working. Um, another thing that I think we could do is, so we might not have the staircase wrapping around it right now, but we could, probably should, try to bring these turrets in at a minimum. Which, again, this is another great opportunity for like a good punch of contrast to draw the eye where we want it. Can I make these big enough? And I want to make sure that you can kind of tell that there's this pattern of a spiral. So I might actually re position these. Yeah. Like I, I had it in the sketch, but they were just kind of put in those positions just kind of almost on a whim. But I think if I have more of them and they're more clearly in this kind of pattern here. Um, it's a little easier to see that there's this kind of spiral twist to it. So that's not bad. I might actually raise them up a bit. So there's just a little overlap even. Um, or actually the one in the middle might be kind of a bit higher just because they we're looking up um, at this so there's this kind of like arc like this so even if like the bottom of this is just the top of that one and the bottom of that is the top of that one this one is kind of shifted up visually just because of that that like this arc here so And I think I might make sure they're very big. Can't hurt to make sure you can see it, right? Um, so the ones at the sides are going to be a bit like narrower too, because they're facing a bit away from us, whereas the one in the middle it's kind of pointing more towards us, so we're seeing it more head on. Shift this over to the left a tiny amount. Okay, so that kind of feels like the a floor of the tower suddenly. Like I can see that kind of climbing. Um, yes, I'm glad that this is able to convey that location idea. It's not not only purple for the sake of being purple, I suppose, even though I know that is your dream. Perhaps one day we will just have a location in the game that's just about purple. There certainly is a good amount of it. Mmm, Jules' windows is a neat idea. Hmm. They could just be jewels, yeah. And it still conveys that language. Okay, but like, I guess if we're already worried about it feeling too epic and and like valuable and stuff, maybe we don't want to go too ham on that. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, so where's my color pass? I kind of want to pull it down a smidge. Still a bit strong. We got a delivery. Huh? 
one second. All right, I'm back. All right, so I think that this is looking pretty magical. I'll probably play with the color, kind of like punch up anyways at the end. Just sleeping on that cord. Um, plus, this, this should probably be on the very top layer anyways, because I can kind of like have this. Ugh, scroll up, please. Come on. There we go. Um, I can have this kind of like just tweaking some colors on the the, the cobble as well, right? Um, I think that'll look nice. So, but for now, I actually should turn that off just so that um, just so that I'm not like grabbing colors and it's the wrong color because it has like uh, an adjustment layer doing stuff to it. Pardon me. Um, this as well, I think I'm going to pull this back a bit. It's a good thing to have, but I think it's just a little strong, and I think it's also kind of like at the very end as well, I can kind of like judge how much it needs. So I will also move that up to the top. These, I think, are just like sketch stuff. So, yeah, that's the old. These are other sketch layers that I didn't need anymore. This is the actual sketch, which has some use still, but not much. Yeah, okay, cool. So, let's actually just kind of start doing some of this cobblestone. Um, I want to kind of like bring in a little bit more of that kind of like desaturated stone because right now it's very saturated. Um, and I do want to have enough kind of like light um, to give a little bit of dimension to the stones around the windows and kind of overall. So what I'm thinking is either the windows can generate that light to show it, or there is just like a little bit of this kind of like atmosphere, uh, atmospheric kind of light to show us these kind of textures. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm thinking that it's fine to kind of put a little bit of just ambient light. Um, even if it has so much backlight, it's fine. So I'm going to pull back the saturation, I'm going to brighten it up. Um, and I think I'm going to bring a little bit more blue into it. And then um, I'll just have the light come from, you know, above. It's easy that way. Feels logical. But maybe it should be from below. Um, so as well, we could have it where like you can see this ambient light kind of affecting the cobblestone at the ends, but then like when we get to the center, maybe this light is so bright it kind of washes out the uh, your ability to to see that kind of subtle lighting on on the stones there. Um, so like it starts to vanish the closer we get. Right? It's just that light is just so bright. Our eyes can no longer register it properly. Um, and right now I kind of have like a almost kind of flat rendering on it where each of these stones is kind of like getting an even amount of the lighting, and I think I'm going to pull back on that a bit. Um, so 
So I'm going to try and create a little bit more round roundness on this. So like these are it's not like a flat panel of stones. It's oh thanks for adjusting the camera, Pika. It's uh you know wrapping in a cylinder. So you know the the stones that are in, directly in the middle are facing towards us. So any of the light that's kind of like hitting it is hitting it on that you know angle. But then near the ends, it's kind of like curving. So some of those would be getting like light you know directly here. But then the ones that are curving out here, it might only be just on like a little bit of an edge there. So like I imagine if we have the light coming from above, it might just hit the edges of those, right? Whereas on this side, it's maybe hitting kind of like the full face of it. And the middle part, it's kind of like somewhere in between. Um, also, the sketch that I have still visible actually is maybe working against me because um, a lot of these stones that I sketched in these two areas are kind of wrapping further out. Um, whereas I should have treated these as much kind of more curved away and so smushed um, horizontally. So I'm going to tweak that. So I'll just kind of get rid of that. And then I can make that look more round by having kind of thinner stones like this. That Kind of get a bit wider to show that it's turning towards us. Right now, so these ones are facing us directly. And then these are kind of rolling away from us again. I'll just have kind of just the edge getting that ambient light. And we can like obviously bring in shadows to kind of, I mean generally I actually start with shadows instead of the highlights, but I just felt that it was so kind of like saturated. I wanted to bring in light that desaturated it, which is kind of interesting. Um, smudge that a little bit. There might be like some nice kind of texture to these stones that just catches a little bit more light. They don't need to be like these perfectly smooth kind of uh, stones. So a little bit of texture might help um, make that feel more stone-like. And then in that case, we can also have kind of some little pits and stuff that kind of, you know, the light doesn't quite get down into those areas where it's kind of being stretched across the surface. Or it's like rolling away from the light. The light's just going to kind of skip across it. Whereas where it's directly facing the light source, which is a very soft light source, by the way. This is like just the ambient light. So it's like kind of coming from a lot of different angles and it's very soft. Um, so you don't get a lot of like strong shadows with that. The, the actual powerful light is what's behind this. So again, we don't want to lose that quality by overdoing the light here. I just wanted to be able to kind of create that, you know, 3D dimension. Um, so the rings are going to be like a silver, because uh, I feel like the um, the Valor Rift has kind of you know like uh, a nice display of silver medals. Um, like a lot of the armor is kind of like a, a good silver with like some detail, and then some have kind of like gold trim on it. But um, I think that was kind of like we wanted to you know we have a lot of like brass and gold in other areas, so having this place. Kind of use silver is kind of a little bit different, so it's kind of unique to it. 
Um, so I think it, it was nice to bring that across for the tower design at least. Alright. So it's gonna it's gonna like have a little bit done to it. Just so that it's not just some weird gray. To try and make it look metallic. Alright. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer really quick. And I'm going to have this kind of bleed light. Um, so I'm going to use my... Oh, let me scroll down. I'm going to use my occlusion brush. My Jacob Custom. I don't make a lot of brushes, but this is one that I like. Uh, I find it quite handy. It's just a, a very sudden fall off. It's kind of hard to see here. Like right in the center. It's quite dark, but then it like dramatically falls off and like it, it's kind of gradient goes like all the way out to here kind of thing. So you get this very kind of soft transition. And it's not a very good brush. I think it could be made way better. Um, but it works for my purposes. Uh, so I'm just kind of like bringing a little bit of the idea of this light kind of coming out of the, the tower windows. And to help sell that, I'm going to use this layer. And not quite. I want to keep the blue edge. Uh, I don't know if I want to like have it compete with the eclipse level of light. Yeah, try knocking that back just a bit more. So I feel like it's cool that the um, the eclipsed light is like way stronger. Um, in which case, I'm kind of like, should the windows in the center even like be visible? So if it's like that much brighter, it might overtake it. Uh, so I don't know. Um, let me try the scalable smudge brush. I feel like this might be better for what I do. Sorry if I'm not kind of very clear about what's happening right now. Basically just trying to like create a little bit of interesting window glow, but trying to figure out how far is too far. Um, like, do I want it that fuzzy? Maybe not. So I want to use like a special layer property to kind of like help with this. Maybe not. Hmm. This is feeling a little bit more appropriate. It's just kind of like a little bit of color bleed at those corners. And maybe I pull it back just a little bit right in the center. 
anyways, I am going a little too far into the specifics here. Uh, I think I need to render the rest of this before I can even know what's right for it. Um, so I'll just leave those as bright as they were, in case I wanted to keep that. All right, so back to the cobble. cobble. All right, so I kind of have the ambient stuff, the light anyways, kind of brought in to kind of like show that there is some dimension to these stones. Uh, but I'm going to take the same thing and put a little occlusion between some of them where I think there could be just slightly deeper shadows. Yeah, it's kind of case where like right in the center I don't mind kind of like washing out all the information because the the light is overpowering your eyes there so you can't actually take in that detail. Ooh, I have another technique that I like to do with the light where it's so bright it's like causing those spots in your vision. I love to add that to magic effects and stuff. I might be able to do it right on the, the rim light there and that might add to that quality. For now, just gonna make sure that these feel a little bit more a little bit more connected. Um, and so where this is rolling away from the ambient light, maybe I just make that a bit darker overall. Same with that. Neat. Oh, all right. Um, we're going to take a quick look at this in grayscale, see how that's holding up, and that'll kind of get us close to the point where we can kind of do the final little tweaks uh, before I'm going to sign off on this image and see if we can really quickly whip up a, an idea for the treasure chest. We're obviously not going to be able to render it out, but if I can get a sketch started, that'd probably be a good thing. Uh, right. So, yeah, I think this is working. I'm going to get a little more kind of like purple haze glow to kind of like take it off the backdrop even more, I think. Um, even though it's got like that really strong rim light, I think that can be taken a bit further. But I think the next part is using this kind of like uh, rim light to like really add a lot of cool interest to the, the rubble. Um, and that'll be nice. So let's see. Let's take a look at this in grayscale. All right, that's fine. Um, I'm pretty content with that. Let's give it a flip. I think that's OK. I don't really see anything that's bothering me really. Uh, yeah, so this is a good time to kind of like using the grayscale, see what isn't actually reading, and um, kind of bring in the contrast to make it read. Or if something looks too noisy, to use the values to kind of pull that back. And um, I like to use like value brushes if I'm just on one layer to do that because uh, then it doesn't matter what color you pick up, you're just picking up how how um, white or black the, uh, the paint you need to adjust things with is. And like right now, if I grab, I'm grabbing a gray, right? There's no color to any of this. I'm just grabbing the, the actual value. So I want to use a luminosity brush. Um, and then I'm basically just painting in light and dark. And because the top 
is kind of losing a little bit of definition. I'm going to darken it just a bit more against this kind of brighter backdrop. Um, and then that's going to make it so that when I bring in the rim light, that's even going to punch it up even further, which is cool. But I don't want to overdo it before I bring in that rim light, I guess. All right. And that's good. Okay. So, no grayscale. It's very purple. I'm okay with that. If I look over at the map, um, that's what I'm working with. Um, I think there's some really nice kind of like uh, um, play with the kind of like uh, the nebula cloud where like where it layers over itself it can kind of like add and add and add um, and you get that like caustic kind of quality to it so I think if I try maybe ooh, that looks super cool actually <laughs> um, okay, add glow is neat too Yeah, again, it's not a case where I can just easily sample what these look like. I have to go through and select each one. Um, that looks pretty neat. I'm going to do another layer. Ooh. Now that's electric feeling. Look at that. This might be a bad idea, but I kind of want to do that like chromatic effect here too. Oof. I feel like people are going to look at this and be like, my eyes, what have you done? But I kind of like it being, the backdrop is like blurry, but the item is clear. Uh, so I'm kind of liking this. Tonal correction. It is the tone level correction. Um, and then if I take red and knock it out, and then I go here and I take blue and green. Now, this is mostly mostly just like blue anyway, so I don't know if it's going to be too like noticeable, but level correction. There we go. Green. Be gone. Blue. Be gone. There we go. Okay. So we have our kind of reds. We have our blues. Yeah, see how much impact the blue has and the red is just kind of a touch of it. Might actually double up the, the red one just so it has a little bit more impact. Yeah. Or if I lock transparencies on this and then I make this white, and I didn't lock transparencies on that. That's pretty crazy looking. And of course, we knock that down a bit more. This feels more full Mina, though, so this might not be what I actually want to go with, but I'm just having fun with this now. I think the white was good. Uh, no. I think the hot fiery red. Yeah. Careful, Charlie. Um, just don't want her knocking the monitor, turning it off again. <laughs> Maybe more pink. Okay. There's a little bit less color kind of like shifting because you know, it feels a little more flat now but bring up the opacity yeah 
was uh, that's pretty wild. Oof. Okay, that, I like this actually. Looks very crazy. <laughs> it's a little much, but I kind of like it. Knock that down a little bit. And then if we go to the very top and we bring back in that color pop, we like return some uniqueness to it. Like, because it was kind of feeling a little too much the same purple across the whole thing. My eyes. Yeah, exactly. I, it might be overkill. It might be a bit too much. Um, but right now, it kind of should just have a bit of a blur feel to it. Um, ah, it's kind of fun. <gasps> oh, okay, fair um, All right, so I'm going to leave that backdrop as is because I'm pretty good with that. Now, I want to bring in the, this is going to be an important one, I'm going to bring in the rim light, but let's go for like this light purple, um, and so basically what I can do with this is just help to define just some of these edges just bring a little more texture into it. Gotta, gotta have this purple, right? <laughs> Yay, my eyes, they burn! That's, that's my goal. Just kind of... I enjoy kind of like making things that like actually make your eyes feel like you're staring at pure magic and it burns. It's kind of fun. It's maybe a bad idea because some people are probably pretty uncomfortable by, with it, which is more than understandable and fair. What? Oh, I just thought I heard a noise from the wash. Pop. Um, yeah, I don't want to make it uncomfortable to look at, but I do want to make it feel, you know, crazy and otherworldly. So I'm actually kind of throwing some rim light where it technically should not actually end up, but I think it'll look, it'll help kind of like show some of the texture a little bit better anyway, so I'll justify it. As long as we understand our rules, we can break them. Rules? Wherever we're going, we don't need rules. The, uh, the light catching these objects because they're kind of just out in the open and the light's behind the structure, so why wouldn't it? Alright, 
that's a different layer. And I guess I'll need to do this on this layer too. Map, map. And maybe there's like a little bit of like bounce light happening that kind of brings even more light on the surface facing us because like the inside of the tower there, the far side of the tower, that's going to be getting tons of super strong light and that's just now deflected and bouncing onto these surfaces. Actually, I'm quite liking this feeling now. Before, I was just kind of like, eh, it's okay, but now it feels like it's this 3D thing just kind of like falling apart almost. Um, so that worked out. Yay. Um, I'm actually going to duplicate this one more time. Ooh. It actually kind of looks cool. Um, I was actually going to try and bring that more to the middle <laughs> uh, and make this the kind of like proper blue, okay, um, that we kind of expect it to be. But then let's go normal. Nope. Let's go. Color depth. Kind of pulls it closer to where I need it. Yeah, it is a little uh, glow is where we were, and I like it. Um, brightness, nope. 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 Lighter color. Hard mix. Pin light. Linear light. Alright, um, it's just very fuzzy right now, which is actually what I want. I think add glow is the right thing. But what I wanted to do was kind of like push and pull. Um, so I want to just kind of like, you know, like when um, you're looking at the bottom of a pool and you have that caustic lighting where it's kind of like the waves the crest of kind of like where they pass over each other, it gets brighter in the center and darker as it goes away. Um, I wanted to kind of like use this add layer to kind of create more of that quality for this light, which I don't know if this is gonna work. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna try this. Where I just kind of create a grid, a wobbly grid probably the worst way to do this, especially since I'm using such a hard edge brush. It's like an interference pattern. Um, and if I use like a smudge tool to kind of just soften some of those edges. Because like I'm not actually changing the the um, the layer uh, what's painted there. I'm just kind of using a clipping mask to um, 
enhance and, and like pull back here and there. Let's use a gentle brush and just knock back a bunch of it. I, I think I'll just use it to like accent where I think it's neat. Just turning this on and off to see what effect this has. It's very electric feeling, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's not bad. I almost want like a, just a punch of like orange, just to blast it with that color. Um, I think I don't want to actually do that. I'm going to pull this back a little bit more, actually. Um, I'm going to use a clipping mask again just to make sure I can get back to where I was in case I didn't like how much I pull it back. So I just want to use a little much. Okay, and then if I Use my gentle brush. I just wanted a little softer background. So it's very intense. Admittedly on purpose, but now if I compare, I can kind of see where I was and where I ended up. So I'm going to bring just that intensity back in the center. I like it Oop. more down there, but yeah, it was it had that box quality to it, and I think that's maybe what I'm trying to get rid of here. So that feels a little more kind of organic. Um, I'm just gonna knock it out in the It's even more organic feeling now. Okay, so one more background thing that I wanted to put in here is the um, the like star bursts. Because um, I think that looks really cool. All right, so if we pull up our reference. It's not much of it, but there's like little star kind of stuff going on, and I think that looks rad. Um, and I put that in the sketch originally too. Um, and actually like a, a reason for this because like the mice images don't really show this but like if you look on the map and look at the the Valor Rift there. That's where you see these. Um, so I think maybe some of the mice have this going on. It's been a while since I've been there and even though I was just looking at some of the mice, kind of didn't pay that close attention to all the detail. Yeah, technically, um, what I should be doing is mirroring this lens, right? So what's happening is um, it's almost like there's a smudge on the screen, and so you have these rays going out exactly like that, right? Um, technically, I should actually have these stars using the exact same starburst pattern because basically they're all points of light coming into this lens and they're all hitting the same smudge um, or uh, imperfections um, and so I believe that they should all kind of like have the same scatter of light They should all kind of like blur in the same way. It's like if you 
see a photograph of like street lights or or like at at night when it's raining and the street lights are on you like squint you see like the lights stretch and all the street lights have the exact same stretch pattern or something um, i feel like that's what should be happening with the light here depending on how intense the light is i feel like you know it will be more apparent and less apparent but yeah i just feel like it would make sense if they all have that same pattern. Alright. And some of these are like maybe not nearly as bright. So maybe they'll only just have a little subtle. stretch where it's like the most intense. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah. Oh man, 4 a.m. Yeah, good night. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Um, I think we're pretty much getting there. Uh, okay, so I think I'll hit this with the chromatic Ab aberration, is that the correct term? I forget now. Uh, and bop, bop. I'm going to have these shift less because I want them to feel further away. So stuff that's closer would shift further because we're kind of like one eye is one color, the other eye is the other color. And if it's close, it's going to move like you hold something real close and change what eye you're looking at it with. It's going to shift a lot. But if you look at something really far away, and you change what eye you're looking at it with, it's like barely moves. Um, and stuff super far away, you won't even be able to tell. Um, so these aren't going to shift nearly as much. So I'm going to use this technique I used up here, uh, which is an add glow. It's a multi whoop, add glow. I don't know what this does, but there we go. And you are going to be my blue, tonal correction, level correction, red, be gone. Done. And next one, tonal correction, level correction, green, be gone, blue, be gone. Okay. And the red. So it's just just enough that you can just kind of see it at the the vertical kind of beams, right? Um, all right. Anything else for this? Yes, the metal. Goodness, the metal! I haven't even touched this. All right, that'll be the last thing for it, and I might have to wrap up at that point. But I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out, so not, not too bad. We didn't get everything done, but I can't say that I'm not surprised. It's me and streaming, after all. Uh, how to get the silver quality with this light quality. Oh boy, this is going to be an interesting... Okay, so we have a band that's um, flat and then curved around uh, a cylinder, but it's also kind of tapered at an angle. So we're going to be having the light kind of banding along this kind of like this plane right but because it's wider at the top and narrow at the bottom it's going to be kind of darted in a way so it's like um, stretched so it's a bit longer what it's reflecting is longer at the top than at the bottom um, 
but overall the the like the color kind of smear the the light smear is going to be in this kind of direction so i think if we just kind of like create some interesting um kind of streaks of light that feel like a good reflection uh, hopefully that'll feel like metal because the, the thing is in this environment it's hard for me to kind of like be like this is what this is going to be reflecting and showing because um, that's what I try to do kind of showing light uh, showing metal and also you know, silver I'm going to try and keep it more blues um, I like to try and uh, influence the color of the light being reflected using um, like a pretty strong kind of like restriction to so like bronze it's like everything that's reflected is like within this range of colors maybe a little more green depending on you know what alloys might be in there um, but like silver is probably going to be able to reflect a lot more colors because it's kind of a lot it's more like white light that is reflecting, but I like to lean it into kind of blues um, and just try and restrict it there so it feels more metallic. Um, but yeah, like I could see it getting purples. Um, but I also want to like really to to get that metal metal feeling have like some really strong um, kind of contrast and brights and darks kind of. Making it interesting. Um, so maybe something like that. And we could have like some of these stretching a bit in some spots. It's like maybe not like a perfect surface, so it's kind of like warped just at the edges, um, which would cause the light to kind of like be um, reflected. Uh, a little bit differently. Um, and I'm, I'm going to light the edge just so it reads better against the cobblestone there, I think. Um, but also, if there's just like a little lip, it might just catch enough light to do that anyways. Yeah, metal can be a tricky, tricky thing to create a nice kind of read on. Um, so we have this window here that has that blue glow. So I'm going to bring that in here. Just really like let that kind of get a little bit of oomph. Might have overdone it. I think I actually like did overdo it. Yeah, it looked better when it wasn't as intense. Um, so I got some of this background purple in here, maybe. A little darker overall. Bring some red into that. And then I have this kind of electric window purple blue streak across that just a little bit. And and we can kind of like get like little dabs of highlight just to kind of like say like, oh there's a little bit of texture to the metal. Okay. All uh, right, so I'm going to wrap it up because um, I have to head out in a few minutes. Charlie did not agree with that. She just kind of like sleepily grumbled. All right. Um, oops. Okay, so I'm going to try and quickly just do that metallic feel across these two other pieces, and I think that's it. Pretty good. Just bring the central kind of band here. Because we have kind of like the two pieces of metal where it kind of like screws together, right? 
And that's just going to go like pure black in there. Nice and dark here. Because we, we have like that just blast of light behind it. So you know what? I'm okay with just kind of knocking that out right there. Um, but right at these edges, oh boy, it's getting a lot of light. Just going to go pure white. Oh boy. Just completely blinded by it. Blue. So not. And some blue from that window there. Cool. Feels metallic. And that's what we want. Just gonna get some of this dark working there. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Zoom out. Again, like we're at the you know eighty percent kind of mark for it um, to kind of like take it to that last hundred percent. I don't have the time um, on the stream right now to reach that, but that is something that I can do before I fully upload it if I can kind of like find the right. Thing to you know, take it to that next level, which I will try and discover. But right now, I think I've managed to get where I want it. That's pretty cool. I am not displeased with this image. Um, I am going to just ever so gently erase just the tips of these so there's just a little more color in them because the the add um, on that layer really makes it so that there's just so much more brightness visible than than what I put down originally yeah all right I think we had it I'm going to save, and I'm going to export the time lapse, just so you can watch it. That's fun. This is how I'm going to try and wrap up the streams, at least when I can do the, you know, um, I'm going to put it to the full time. All right. So yeah, so this is how I'm going to try and wrap it up when I actually have the time lapse recording, because it's fun. It just kind of goes over everything we did. If people want to just kind of watch, you know, um, streams later, they can kind of jump to the end just to see this stuff. Um, and I noticed that, like, uh, someone on Feedback Friday managed to get a capture of this last time I did it, which was really cool. Uh, you should just post your time -lapses. I should just post my time lapses. You should use your social media. Alex is bringing out some good points that I need to use my social medias and, and share things. It's true, though, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so I can't say that I'm surprised I didn't get two items completed when I put this much level detail into it. Um, and looking at it, I'm like, oh, I could do this, I could do that. And like, you know, I could easily just literally work on this for a week. That would be a waste, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's fun to do. I enjoy kind of like exploring the possibilities for lighting and texture and all kinds of stuff. Um, and as I said, you know, I actually, that's probably my favorite part of art is trying to render materials in environments and, and like figure out how to kind of capture that quality about it. Um, so even though I rushed it, I actually think the metal turned out better than I thought. Um, although looking at it, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll tweak it. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. I'll probably actually just upload it like this. So that's cool. Um, but 
I am going to close up the stream. It's been fun. I enjoyed this. Thank you for hanging out with me, everyone. Um, I'll repost the Larry link uh, in the chat for this. Um, and I'll also post the art on my page later. Um, uh, Cause I gotta help sort a thing right now, but I'll share that and put the Larry link there as well, um, in case anyone missed it. But save, and I shall see you all hopefully next time, probably two weeks. Um, but until then, stay safe, uh, wash your hands, wear your masks, all that social distancing goodness. Um, and I shall see you next time. Uh, happy hunting, everyone. Goodbye for now. Bye.